Check one, two. Check test.
All right, good afternoon, everyone. If we can start to quiet down, we will turn to Tony to take the roll. Jimenez? Present. Torres? Present. Cohen? Here. Ortiz? Present. Davis? Here. Duan? Here. Candelas? Here. Foley? Here. Batra? Present. Kame? Here. Mayhem? Here. Give a quorum. Great, thank you. Well, good afternoon. Welcome, everyone. I'm pleased to call to order this meeting of the San Jose City Council for the afternoon of March 19th. If you are able, please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. All right. Today's invocation will be given by San Jose Tycho, and Councilmember Torres will tell us more. Good afternoon, and thank you, Mayor. This will for sure wake everyone up. For my third invocation this month, I introduce the legendary San Jose Tycho. Located in our iconic Japantown, San Jose Tycho celebrates 51 years of captivating global audiences and critics alike with powerful sounds of Tycho, which translates to Japanese drum. So as Johnny Canales would say, take it away, San Jose Taiko. <laughs>
Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilmember Torres. As he said, I think we're very much ready for this meeting now. <laughs> All right. We have a couple of ceremonial items. Councilmember Jimenez, if you'd meet me at the podium, we will recognize Michael Brio. We have any fans of Micro Brio, you can make your way down, please. It's happening soon. Wait, is that out? Out. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> Delay a little bit while everyone makes their way down. Difficult to follow. Uh, San Jose Tycho, but let me give it a shot. So buenos dias, good afternoon everyone. My name is Sergio Jimenez, Council Member District 2. I, uh, as you can see, Michael has a lot of fans. I'm gonna say a few words about him that you may know and some that you may not know, which I think is very important. So I first wanna thank PBC staff, especially Martina Davis and Jared Ferguson and Ruth Guethel for helping us put together this commendation that we think is very well deserved. Uh, Michael has a real passion for, for community outreach and strong belief that good planning really begins and ends with the community. He be began his career in 1996 as a planner too, working at the Strong Neighborhoods Initiative program, and within three years he moved up to supervising the Strong Neighborhoods Initiative team, where he managed a multi-departmental group to develop 10 neighborhood improvement plans that were driven by members of traditionally underrepresented community members. Later, Michael managed the development of a award-winning Envision San Jose 2040 general plan, which was adopted in 2011. Michael's also largely credited for the urban village concept, which has attracted very positive attention for the professional planning community. And most recently, Michael played a role, as, as my office knows very well, a crucial role in the development of the 2023-2031 housing element, a Herculean undertaking to comply with many of the new challenging state uh, uh, requirements. He and his team have worked, di worked diligently on that plan and closely with many stakeholders in our community over two years to develop our very ambitious housing plan, including 130 strategies and programs to be completed over the next eight years. He's been a mentor to many in the PBC department who I'm sure will greatly, greatly miss him and I'm sure some of them are up here. And also lastly, I think this is the most important part of the commendation which is not in the, in the little uh, plaque he's gonna get. But really what I acknowledge is we often see people toiling day in, day out for the benefit of, of our residents in the city of San Jose and we often don't know a lot about them. And so I wanted to share a few things about Michael that you likely don't know and that I quite frankly didn't know. Uh, so let me list off a few of those things that you may not know about Michael. One, which I think he could appreciate, San Jose Tycho, I've learned that Michael's a professional drummer who has worked tirelessly to bring music to our community from playing gigs with San Jose Jazz, his, his jazz band at the De Anza Hotel, to producing club crawls for the Jazz Fest, to being a producer of the Left Coast Live that for three years brought up to 100, mu 100 musical acts uh, a night downtown during the three-day festival. Michael's wife's name is Rena, and they met when she started working here at, as a San Jose planner. And now she's actually the acting director of City of Santa Clara Planning Department. Is she here? Oh, she's here. <laughs> there you go. There you go, which is pretty awesome, right? So they're, they're pretty much the Santa Clara County planning power couple, if you will. They have a 12-year-old son named Booker who is a baseball fanatic, which means that a lot of Michael's time once he's retired is going to be a, being a baseball dad, and I'm sure taking him to many games. He loves gardening, especially with native plants. And if you haven't noticed already, he loves wearing vintage clothing. He owns two, sort of tied to that, he owns two 1940 vintage cars, and I sort of jumped ahead. But in case you haven't noticed, oftentimes, I've actually asked myself this as you come to the meetings, I'm like, this guy is sharply dressed. <laughs> Different generation, but, but sharply dressed, I very much appreciate that, and he really brings some splash and some color to our meeting. Um, and the other thing that I didn't know about Michael is that he's not only a nerd, but a train nerd. Um, and so uh, join me in giving him a round of applause and, and thanking him for his work in the city of San Jose all these years. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, I'll, I'll keep it short because I'm sure a lot of you are waiting for the council to get going, and I know that feeling. But um, I started here in September of, of 1996. This was my first job that I got out of Berkeley with a brand new city and regional planning degree. 
Um, I, if you had asked me back then would I be here today, I would have said no. No, I probably would never have thought of that. But I have stayed. Um, it's a great community to work in. I love the people. I love the communities. Um, I really uh, valued my time working in the Strong Neighbors Initiative. Um, and uh, really, San Jose is on the cutting edge of planning. Um, you may not all know that, but the work that we do when we go to planning conferences and talk to other planners, we are generally way ahead of other communities throughout the United States. So um, I just want to thank you. Um, I, it's been a great place to work for. And, it's, and I really want to say I, the council here has been wonderful. I think I feel like this is a city that, while we have disagreements sometimes, we're generally all rowing in the same direction. And it's a good direction to row in. So thank you very much. And we'll go ahead and present them with a commendation mayor has it. But let me just also say, I forgot to mention this, and I'm sure many of my colleagues can, can attest to this, is, and I've experienced is that even if you don't always tell us what we want to hear <laughs> as we're going down the road seeking to do different things in the city, we very much, I very much appreciate, I'm sure my colleagues share the sentiment, very much appreciate your expertise, your professionalism, and the commitment you've brought to the residents in the city totally. So thank you so much. All right, Council Member Torres, please join me at the podium and we will recognize and proclaim Norus. Good afternoon, everyone. For the first time in a while, we gather here at our City Council to proclaim March 19th as Norus Day to celebrate the Persian Iranian New Year worldwide and the spring equinox. Nowruz has been celebrated for over 3,000 years and is rooted in the ancient Persian history to commemorate the onset of spring and the start of the traditional Persian New Year. Kicking off 13 days of celebration, Nowruz promotes the values of peace, solidarity between families, generations, and communities to strengthen ties among people through mutual respect and ideals of good Neighborhood, neighborliness. Norus is celebrated by over 300 million people globally and is a symbolic opportunity to reflect on the past and set intentions for the future. Celebrating Norus together here at our city council reaffirms our city's passion and motivation to spread inclusivity and cultural verity. Norus reminds us that we can all use a second to reflect on our interactions, beliefs, and opinions to see how we can create better relationships and be there for our friends, families, and neighbors. With that said, it is the greatest honor that I, along with my colleagues on the San Jose City Council, proclaim March 19th, 2024 as Noru's Day. And accepting the commendation today is amazing Persian leaders from the Iranian Scholarship Fund, including one of my favorite leaders in our valley and in our county, Suzanne. I'm not as tall as Omar. <laughs> okay. Um, all I want to say, as we celebrate this joyous holiday that marks arrival of spring and new life, we extend our gratitude to San Jose City Council member Omar Torres, my favorite, and his team acknowledging this peaceful celebration. In particular, we would like to express our appreciation toward Mayor Mahan and his team for their generous support, as well as the C San Jose City Council members who endorsed this proclamation. 
Regardless of where you celebrate this festive, festive occasion, we hope you are blessed by the coming of the new year with renewed energy and health. Our sincerest hopes for a tranquil and thriving Nowruz celebration extend to all inhabitants of Santa Clara County, Nowruz Piruz, Nowruz Mubarak. All right, we're on to orders of the day. Does anyone on the council have any changes to the printed agenda? Not seeing any. We will move on to the closed session report. Hello, Mayor. We do not have a report out of closed session today. Great, thank you. On to the consent calendar. Are there any items that the council would like to pull from consent? I was not made aware of any. I don't see anybody chiming in. Okay. Just before we entertain a motion on consent, why don't I say a couple of things about the run of show for today. First, let me say it's great to see a full chamber. We love seeing such robust civic participation. Thank you for making the time to be here today. I assume most folks are here to weigh in on the budget, but we will have many oper on, on each of these items, there'll be an opportunity for public comment. So here's, here's how this will work. We will limit public comment today to one minute per speaker because we have a lot of people who want to participate. We, you can participate in public comment by getting one of the cards, the yellow cards down here by the comment box on either side. We also have language translation for Tony Spanish, Vietnamese. Is that and correct? Mandarin. I'm sorry? And Mandarin And today. Mandarin. Please note on the comment card which item you want to speak on. For example, the budget message is item 3.3. One other note, and I know there's going to be a lot of energy and support in the room. For the sake of hearing the clerk and moving efficiently, we as a standard practice ask folks not to cheer or clap or make a lot of noise because then the next speaker can't hear that it's their turn. You're welcome to use jazz hands to indicate your support, but we wanna make sure we hear from everyone. Um, I think that's it. Tony, is there anything else about the process you wanna note for folks? Um, people using an interpreter get two minutes. I'm sorry, that's right. Those using an interpreter will have two minutes, so we have time for translation. Okay, great. So, would love to entertain a motion on the consent calendar, if we have one. So moved. Second. Thank you. Second from Torres, and let's, oh, let's go to public comment. There are no cards for closed session, okay. or for consent calendar. Consent, no, no comment cards for consent. Let's vote. I need, um, it's not working for me if everybody could just vote orally. Okay. Just like say aye or All those nay. in favor? Yeah. Aye. aye. Any opposed? Looks like that passes unanimously. Thank you. Hopefully we can sort that out. Okay, we're on to item 3.1, report to the city manager. Thank you, Mayor, I do have a report today. I'm pleased to share that we were awarded a $1 million cannabis equity grant from the California okay. Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development to embark on a new phase of the city's Cannabis Equity Business Academy led by the Office of Economic Development and Cultural Affairs in partnership with the Enterprise Foundation and Cal Asian. This grant, will allow us to support the Cannabis Equity Business Academy graduates through grants so they can open their business or for paid fellowships for those wishing to pursue leadership management or employment in the industry. 
We will also be able to provide legal and regulatory assistance, all of which support our attracting investments in jobs and housing City Council focus area and helps us incrementally close racial inequities, which is one of my foundational focus areas. For the past year, 29 San Jose residents and entrepreneurs have been participating in the City Cannabis Equity Business Academy. Of the 29 participants, 86% identify as Asian, Black African American, Latino, Native American, or Pacific Islander. This no-cost, inclusive program seeks to equalize the playing field in this complex, regulated business sector by providing comprehensive entrepreneurship training within the cannabis sector to those disproportionately affected by the regulations and discriminatory enforcement of historical cannabis laws. I'd like to th thank the City Manager's Office of Economic Development and Cultural Affairs and the Office of Administration Policy and Intergovernmental Relations for helping with this grant. We look forward to formally presenting this grant award to the City Council for adoption during the, May tw the March 26th City Council meeting. Not trying to jump ahead to May yet. Thank you. Great. Thanks for sharing that, Jennifer. That is good news. Okay. We are on to item 3.3, approval of the fiscal year 2024-2025 Mayor's March budget message. As we get into this item, I just want to share a couple of, of quick thoughts. Uh, you know, our, our task last year was comparably easier because we had a surplus and we had the ability to identify a number of priorities we wanted to fund on a one-time basis. This year, unfortunately, as we've seen revenues slow, and in a few cases even decline a little bit, we have a tougher job ahead of us. We know there are many, many needs in the community. There's the desperate crisis of homelessness. There's the need for affordable housing. There's the need to adequately staff all of our departments from public safety to parks and libraries, maintain our infrastructure. We have many, many competing needs, and what I've tried to do in this budget message with the input and help from my Budget Brown Act, and let me pause and thank them. I want to I want to thank Councilmember Davis, Councilmember Foley, Councilmember Cohen, Councilmember Torres, all of whom gave input on this message, is create a framework for balancing a budget, which is the city manager's unenviable task in the coming months, in a way that enables us to continue to provide critical city services while still making progress in the council's adopted focus areas and minimizing the impact on the community as we close what is currently estimated to be about a $52 million structural shortfall. It's not the same as a deficit, it's a structural shortfall, which means we're about $52 million below in terms of the revenue we have what we think we need or would like to have, especially taking into account the need to more expeditiously move people out of our waterways into safer managed environments and to reduce discharge into the waterways. So this is gonna be a tougher conversation this year. I am confident that all of my colleagues and I will work together with the city manager and her team to strike an appropriate balance that seeks to continue to serve our entire community and meet all of the needs in our community, but I don't want to sugarcoat it. Closing a $52 million shortfall will be hard and we will have to make some sacrifices and trade-offs. And that gets to the importance of hearing from the community, which we're doing today, and I want you to know that today is in many ways the beginning of the process, not the end. We will have budget town halls over the coming months. We'll have budget study sessions here in chamber that will be publicly accessible, and we'll be having an ongoing dialogue over the next few months over which services are most critical, which trade-offs to make, where we can cut, because we will have to find that $52 million worth of trade-offs to close the gap that's currently projected. And that, of course, could change, but that's, that's kind of the rough estimate at this moment. So um, I, once again, want to just thank my Budget Brown Act for their collaboration and support in putting together the message. And uh, I, I trust that our city manager, after this message passes, is going to do a great job of reading us in on her thought process as she works with her team to bring forward a balanced budget that is in accordance with the direction we give today 
and, and really seeks to meet the needs of the community with the finite resources that we have. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause there and turn to Tony. And just as a reminder, we do have a number of people who wanna speak today, which is a great thing. We probably have on the order of a couple of hours of comments, which is good. Will be one minute for those speaking in English, two minutes for those with translation. And again, we'd ask folks to express their support without making a lot of noise, cheering or clapping, so that people can hear Tony and we can move through public comment uh, efficiently together. So, Tony, I'm going to turn it over to you. I'd also like to ask one of the Spanish interpreters to come down. Um, I have a significant number of speakers that need interpretation, so I want to make sure you come on down. Um, and I'm going to do them in sets of 10 English, 10 Spanish to give the interpreters a break. Um, so I'm going to start, I'm going to call several names. If you hear your name, go ahead and come on down. First person in the microphone, go to the microphone, and then the other ones can sit in the reserve spaces in the, in the front row. And then as the next, first speakers, you know, their time is up, then you should just get up and move to the mic. Um, so I'm going to start with a few names, Jeff Levine, Bill Wallace, Larry Ames, and Larry Whitaker. Come on down. Hi, I'm Jeff Levine. I'm going to keep my message short. I know there's a, a big deficit that we're facing, but I'm encouraged by the mayor's attention to detail, attacking the quality of life issues that we're all fully aware of. And what I don't want to see happen in the council and my neighbors is people saying, oh, leave my little pot alone, leave my little pot alone. We all have to make sacrifices. I understand that, but I fully support the mayor's effort and thoughtfulness in this, and I urge the entire city council to work constructively to, to get a good, solid budget that it addresses our, our major concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Uh, good afternoon, uh, honorable mayor, council members. Uh, my name is uh, Bill Wallace. I'm a retired union member, and I support the Fair Food Work Ordinance that uh, you're going to be discussing, I believe, to, com to uh, create something. Uh, when when I read unregulated, businesses tend to cut corners with workers. This happens with employee wages and benefits because it affects their bottom line and individual employees are the most vulnerable. This is about dignity for workers. Employees in the fast food industry are vulnerable because they lack protection by organized labor and they are the most vulnerable of society. One employee does not have the same strength as 100 organized workers. So I'm asking you to say yes in creating this ordinance. And due to- Thank you, next speaker. Hi, I'm Larry Ames, a longtime park and community advocate. I request that the city expand its polling on parks to evaluate the community's priorities on how to best address the issues of infrastructure backlog and the equitable and financial sustainability of the park system. I hope you received the letters that we've sent you outlining some of our concerns. The city has a $600 million backlog and commercializing the parks will not address the need of this magnitude and still meet the city's obligation to its community to maintain the quality of life. Great cities have great parks. Please don't pawn our crown jewels. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, I'd also like to call down Chris Shea, Susan Hayes, or Victor Sin. Both names are on that card. Um, Gianella Ordonez and Marissa Martinez. Go ahead. Hello, Council. My name is Larry Whitaker, and I live in District 9. I am very concerned about homelessness, blight, mental illness, crime, and drug addiction. I urge you to support the mayor's budget message, which will help us get people indoors faster. Please vote to pass the message. Thank you. 
Thank you. Next speaker. Hello, uh, my name is Susan Hayasa, representing the Santa Clara Valley chapter of the ACLU of Northern California. Our chapter submitted written comments yesterday and I'd like to highlight three items. One, regarding unsheltered homelessness, investment in subsidized permanent affordable housing, social housing and services is the solution. Proposals that cite jail or displace people for being unhoused or forcibly segregating people into mass shelters by threat of citation or jail time are not effective or just. Two, before the city doubles the number of automatic license plate readers, the public deserves transparent information about how the 2.7 million ALPR detectors collected in the uh, last 30 days are used. And third, we strongly urge the city to fund the expansion of the trust field response program to provide non-police response to San Jose residents in mental health crisis. Thank you very much. Before we go to the next speaker, I just want to announce we have uh, people in the overflow rooms and I want them to know that we're on our way to bring speaker cards over to you so you will get an opportunity to speak. Thank you, go ahead. Oh, and also um, Dana, uh, um, Dana Anil and Jeff Buchanan. Okay. Good afternoon, my name is Chris Shea and I serve as the Vice President for Government Affairs at the Shark Sport and Sports and Entertainment as well as a board member on the Venerable San Jose Downtown Association. In the recent budget letter, the focus on downtown gateway beautification is greatly appreciated. On average year, we welcome 1.5 million guests to the SAP Center, and the city estimates 1.7 million guests to Sharks Ice Tech CU. Ensuring those visitors from out of town, as well as all of our San Jose residents, have an enjoyable first impression of San Jose is critical to ensuring return trips to both iconic locations and to ensuring our hotel and restaurant partners' rooms and tables are filled and our downtown is lively. This has been a phenomenal week with NVIDIA and the conference, and that would be wonderful to repeat over and over again. We are painfully aware that while office res residents are important to our downtown, they alone will not be the savior of our city's future. The focus on making San Jose's downtown a, downtown a unique and interesting place to visit and live will continue to need our attention in this budget furthers that progress process. While we've made headway on the vendor issue in downtown, we must embrace- Thank you, next speaker. Hello, my name is Janelle Ardonias, and I'm here on behalf of Silicon Valley Council of Nonprofits, a co-convener of the Nonprofit Race Equity Action Leadership Coalition known as REAL. This is the second year in a row that the mayor's budget message demand we hold off on REAL solutions to our housing crisis for temporary solutions. Sweeps, tents, and congress shelters don't end homelessness and offer minimal relief. Our dollars are limited and it is imperative that they are invested in permanent, affordable housing. We are concerned and surprised the mayor will once again try to gut Measure E funds, undermine the will of the voters, and jeopardize affordable housing development that address the root of the problem. Our urgent need to improve community safety is also not reflected in the mayor's budget message and disregards the unanimous will of the council to invest more in alternative response and violence prevention. These are public safety issues that fall under the jurisdiction of the city. We support items two, four, and six in the memo for council members Ortiz, Jimenez, and Candelas. Specifically, the calls to protect Measure E funds, spurring affordable housing, changing how city distribute park fees, and investing in the success of trust. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hello. My name is Marissa Martinez, and I'm a lifelong resident of San Jose. I grew up in Districts 5 and 8, and I currently live in District 3. Um, I'm with SVCN and the Real Coalition, and I have worked in local nonprofits and arts organizations. The mayor's budget message does not reflect the urgent need to improve community safety and invest in violence prevention. We must not disinvest from Measure E, the city's only reliable source for funding new affordable housing. It is the city's responsibility to ensure public safety and create permanent housing, so we must protect Measure E funds and invest in real solutions that will support our community, not make it harder to live in San Jose. Additionally, as an artist and arts advocate, I believe the city must also support the arts sector. Affordable housing, violence prevention, and support for the arts is necessary in creating an equitable and welcoming city for our community to thrive in. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. Uh, good morning, Mayor and Council. Uh, Jeff Buchanan, I'm from uh, Working Partnerships. Uh, as we focus on homelessness, let's not forget to think about root causes and not just symptoms. I want to talk about an industry where one in nine workers 
are in California uh, are homeless. Uh, where one in nine homeless workers in California work in, where 85% of workers experience wage theft, where 93% of workers don't even know their rights on the job. I'm talking about the 13,000 San Jose fast food workers. Uh, workers who you'll hear from today who have put their lives at risk to be able to ensure they can get a paycheck to keep a roof over their family's heads. But I want to talk about the root cause of fear. Uh, I want to talk about fear of an industry that is fighting hard to ensure that workers don't know their rights on the job, that has hired you know, four of the largest contract lobby firms in the city, that has brought corporate lobbyists, that have formed a shady pact, all that to try to scare you away from trying to think about working with workers to find common sense solutions to allow workers to know their rights, that they don't have to have their wages stolen, they don't have to face abuse, that there are things that they can do. I, I hope this can Thank you. Um, before the next speaker begins, um, I'm gonna call another 10 speakers. The, um, this set requires an, a Spanish interpreter. Um, Carla Keok. Um, the last name is Munoz, and it looks like the first name starts with a Z, but I can't read the handwriting. Um, Vicente Mayoral and Yurina Guzman. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Dana El Neal. I'm a resident of District 7. I'm also here on behalf of SBCN and the Real Coalition. For the second year in a row, the mayor's budget message demands we sacrifice real solutions to our housing crisis in favor of old ideas such as sweeps, tents, and congregant shelters that we stopped doing for a reason because they don't end homelessness and they offer minimal relief. We have to treat our limited dollars to invest in permanent housing as a precious resource, and we are concerned and surprised that the mayor would once again try to gut Measure E and undermine the will of the voters. The mayor's budget message does not reflect our urgent need to improve community safety or the unanimous will of the council to invest more in alternative response and violence prevention. These are public safety issues that fall under the city's jurisdiction. The budget should include funding to add an additional trust. The safety and well-being of residents is the responsibility of San Jose. You can't say the city should spend money on police and then argue community safety isn't your job. We essentially have one trust team for the entire city and the data shows that isn't enough. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. And make sure you alternate, like pause. Okay. Wait, is her mic on? Para los casi 13,000 trabajadores de la comida rápida en la ciudad de San José, en apoyo a la creación de la Ley de Trabajo Justo de Comida Rápida, que por años ha luchado por esos beneficios básicos de cualquier trabajador. Good afternoon, members of the council. My name is Carla Coyoc. I am the leader, a community leader uh, with LUNA, and I am here to raise my voice for almost 13,000 workers in the fast food industry here in the city of San Jose. And I am here in support of creating a law, a work law for just, a, a just work law for the fast food workers. Uh, for years, we have been fighting to receive basic benefits in any kind of job for every worker. I'm sorry, correction. Ya es hora. Es hora que los hagan prioridad a los trabajadores de primera línea de la comida rápida, que son desproporcionadamente mujeres y personas de color a menudo. Se enfrenta a la inestabilidad laboral y a las condiciones laborales inseguras. The time has come uh, for um, the priority to be made for the workers that are first line workers for the fast food industry. We are most, uh, most of us are um, women and people of color, and daily we are facing inst uh, work instability and conditions, insecure working conditions. Creemos firmemente que la ley de trabajo justo de la comida rápida puede ser una fuerza transformadora al garantizar que los trabajadores conozcan sus derechos, capacitaciones y tiempo libre remunerado. San Jose tiene la oportunidad de liderar el empoderamiento de los trabajadores. Thank you. Next speaker. Sorry, Tony. Can we just get the translation of that last the part? Last yes. bit. Uh, oh, no, 
Well, no, she, just what she just spoke. We should at least hear the end of it. Okay. Could, do you Thank mind translating you. the uh, final piece? Thank you. Okay, Nepal. Thank you. Uh, we believe, we firmly believe that the just law for workers in the fast food industry can be a, a force of transformation, a guarantee for workers who will know their rights and they will also know training as well as time off paid. San Jose has the opportunity to be a leader in, the, in empowering these workers in the fast food industry. Buenas tardes, miembros del concilio. Mi nombre es Enaida Muñoz, líder comunitaria con Luna. Esta tarde me uno a las más de 13 mil trabajadoras de, de comida rápida que están luchando por ley de trabajo justo de comida rápida. Good afternoon, members of the council. My name is Enaida Muñoz. I am a community leader with Luna. And this afternoon, uh, please join me with the 13,000 fast food workers that are fighting for the just uh, workers, the, for the law for just workers of uh, fast food industry. A pesar de las ganancias multimillonarias de la industria, los cocineros y los cajeros soportan horarios irregulares como de salarios y acoso sexual y otros problemas generalizando en el lugar de trabajo. Aside from the multi-million dollar uh, gains that the industry makes, the cooks and the cashiers have to bear irregular working hours uh, that they rob their salaries, sexual harassment, and other uh, generalizations in this workplace. Es de suma importancia que el concilio pase la ley de trabajo justo de comida rápida para asegurar que cada trabajador está protegido sobre sus derechos y hacerlos valer. Okay. It is of, very, of the highest importance for the council to pass the just work law for fast food workers to assure that each worker will be protected and their rights will be uh, respected as well as that they feel like if they are valued. Thank you. Thank you. Buenas tardes, miembro del Concilio. Mi nombre es Yurina Guzmán, organizadora comunitaria con Luna. Este día me uno en apoyo a los más de 13 mil trabajadores de comida rápida para asegurar que a partir de ya les garantice sus derechos laborales en la creación de la Ley del Trabajo de Comida Rápida. Good afternoon, members of the Council. My name is Yurina Gómez, and I am a community organizer with Luna. This afternoon, I'm here in support of the 13,000 workers in the fast food industry, so to assure that as of today, that they can go ahead and have work rights guaranteed and creating the new law of just work law for fast food workers. A diario. Compañeras y compañeros sufren el acoso o el despido de los empleadores sin siquiera tener la oportunidad de poder defenderse por no conocer sus derechos como empleados. Daily, my um, work, uh, co-workers suffer uh, harassment and being uh, fired because without having the opportunity of being able to defend themselves without knowing their rights uh, and against their employers. Al garantizar que los trabajadores conocen sus derechos, capacitación y tiempo, y tiempo libre remodelado, San José tiene la oportunidad de liderar el, el empoderamiento de los trabajadores de comida rápida y la mejora de sus vidas, junto con sus familias y sus comunidades. Seguiremos luchando para, para garantizar un ambiente de trabajo laboral digno y seguro. Once you can go ahead and uh, guarantee the workers that they will know their rights, their trainings, and as well receiving time off paid, San Jose can have the opportunity to be the leader of empowerment of these workers in the fast food industries. The majority of the lives and together with their families and the communities. Please follow us in our fight again to be able to guarantee a labor, a labor environment full of dignity and security. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, I'd also like to call down Laura Herrero.
Ramona Martinez and Araceli Peñaloza. Uh, buenas tardes, miembros del Concilio. Mi nombre es Vicenta Mayoral, líder comunitaria con Luna. Hacemos un llamado al Ayuntamiento de San José para defender la segura, seguridad y el bienestar de los trabajadores, respaldando la creación de la Ley de Trabajo Justo de Comida Rápida como una de las principales prioridades de la, en las discusiones pre, presupuestarias de este año. Okay. Good afternoon, members of the council. My name is Vicenta Mayoral. I am a community leader with Luna, and we are here calling out to the city council of San Jose to defend our, our security and our well-beings for the workers that are he I am here to support in helping to create uh, the fair law for workers in the fast food industry, as well as uh, this would be to support them as the priorities in, the, in talking about the presupuestos. And, and this is in regards to the uh, budget of this year. Por años, los trabajadores de comida rápida han sufrido discriminación y violencia laboral. Es hora de que la ciudad de San José tome la responsabilidad de proteger a los, demás, a los más de 13,000 seres humanos de primera línea. For years, the workers in the fast food industry have suffered discrimination and work violence. It, the time has come for the city of San Jose to take responsibility in protecting more than the, more than the 13,000 uh, human beings that are on the front line. Imaginamos una ciudad donde todos, independientemente de su ocupación, tengan acceso a derechos laborales básicos y a la información necesaria para empoderarse en el trabajo. Continuaremos luchando juntos por la justicia laboral que todos merecemos. Gracias. Uh, we imagine a city in which all of us independently, in, uh, while working in our occupation, have access to basic work rights and the information necessary to be able to empower us in our workplace. Also, we continue to fight together to, for the work justice for all of us because we all deserve this. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. I'd also like to call down Liliana Montoya, Maria Herrera, and Janeth Molina. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Ramona Martínez. Buenas tardes, señor, a los concejales. Y me da mucho gusto estar un día más aquí con ustedes. Yo tengo 17 años trabajando en comida rápida. Y ahorita que escuché que, que le dieron reconocimientos a las personas que pasaron adelante de mí. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Roma, uh, Roma, um, Ramona Martínez. And uh, good afternoon, Council. I am very happy to be here with you today. I have worked in the fast food industry for the past 17 years. Oh, I'm very happy that the people that uh, were before me, that they have been recognized. Y por eso yo como trabajadora de comida rápida, Quisiera que igual me tuvieran ese reconocimiento de valer mi derecho, ya que muchas de las ocasiones en nuestros trabajos no tenemos información y, y si nos las dan, nos las dan en inglés para que muchas, muchas veces nosotros no podemos entender lo que nos dice. Okay, and this is why, uh, you know, for in the... I work in the fast food, and also I, w I am requesting that you as well recognize me as a person and to value my rights, since at times at work we do not get all the information, and sometimes if we do receive the information, it's in English and we do not understand it. Es por eso que el día de hoy les pedimos a cada uno de ustedes que nos hagan valer esos derechos y que nos paguen, nos den capacitación que nos den mejor eh, tipo de trabajo, porque estamos muy marginados, somos seres humanos como cada uno de ustedes y queremos ser valorados. And this is why today I request that you please value us and give us the rights 
for training and to give us a, a better job because we are marginalized people and we as well are humans and we deserve to be valued. Thank you, next speaker. No, time. Muy buenas tardes, señor alcalde, señores concejales. Mi nombre es Liliana Montoya. Eh, hoy vengo ante ustedes apelando un poco a la historia. Eh, traigo a la memoria un símbolo de la lucha sudra, sudra, sudafricana, quien no se rindió a, 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 ver, a, a pesar de haber estado 27 años en la cárcel, Y apelo a la historia para que ustedes también hagan historia. Eh, acabando un poco, me refiero al presidente Nelson Mandela, que también fue eh, presidente de esta, y fue un símbolo, un, un sindicalista que luchó por ciertos derechos de los negros. Que ustedes también hagan historia apoyando un poco a los trabajadores de comida rápida. Uh, good afternoon, council members. Uh, my name is Ileana Toya, and I come here before you uh, in regards to making history. What I mean, uh, it's I feel like I'm a symbol. Like uh, I speak of a, um, Nelson Mandela, I think of South Africa, in which he did not give up, even though he was in jail for 27 years. This is like something that was in, made into history, and I am here hoping that you can also make history in supporting us in our work. That one minute is, is up. Uh, thank you very much. Next speaker, I'd also like to call down Carmen Torres, James Kalani, Andre Padilla, and... Claudia Ramiro. Señores concejales, señoras concejalas, soy María Gine de Herrera, empleada eh, de Comidas Rápidas. Eh, mi inquietud y mi queja es la siguiente. Eh, en mi trabajo me he enfermado en varias ocasiones, no me pagan las horas de enfermedad, Eh, estoy medio recuperándome, me llaman que vaya a trabajar eh, con gripe y todo, me hacen entrar a cuartos fríos y si uno reclama le van quitando sus horas. Entonces, esa es mi inquietud. Muchas gracias. Uh, good afternoon, council members. My name is Maria Hernandez, and I'm a fast food. Oh, disculpen. Um, my name is Maria Herrera, and I'm a fast food worker. My complaint, as well as my worry, is that uh, I have to work, and uh, sometimes I'm sick, and I don't get paid time off if I take time off. And maybe when I'm starting to get better, they call me to come back to work full time. And sometimes I have to go into cold places and stuff like that. So that that is my, uh, what I'm hoping for is that that be addressed. And that is my complaint and my worry. Thank you. Muchas gracias, señora. Thank you, next speaker. Good afternoon. My name is Carmen Torres and I represent Siren Services Immigrant Rights and Education Networks. We have for 36 years been an advocate for the immigrant community, helping empower them to, to help themselves. Siren urges you to support the Fast Food Fair Work Ordinance. Despite existing wage protections, many workers remain unaware of their, route, of their rights and lack the ability to advocate for themselves. Many of the constituents you represent include immigrant and migrant workers and refugees. Implementing this ordinance will take a significant step towards empowering workers and ensuring tangible benefits for our community. SIREN stands with the thousands of fast food workers in support of the Fast Food Fair Work Ordinance. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. Hello, members of the council. Uh, my name is Andre Padilla, and I am a fast food worker, and I'm in support of the fast food fair work ordinance. I believe that we deserve to 
I believe that we deserve to be respected and empowered for our hard work. Too often we are mistreated and neglected by managers and corporate members. The fast food fair work ordinance will empower us to be treated with respect and ensure that we, uh, every worker is valued. If we have the power to ensure fast workers can have a healthier life, I believe we should do everything in our power to make this possible. With the support of you, council members, we can make this possible. The lives of 13,000 fast food workers can be vastly improved by this ordinance and also the communities. Let's empower us, the workers, because we are the roots of this society. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. I'd also like to call Kayla Gomez, Lucilla Ortiz, Isabel Olas Coaga um, to come on down. Um, I'll also call Hector Hernandez and Gabriel Manrique. And if, you're, if your name has been called, you can come and sit in this first row that says reserved. That is reserved for the people who have been called. Hello. Uh, my name is Isabel Olaswaga. Um, I'm from the California Nurses Association. I'm here today to say we are disappointed. We're disappointed that this city council can hear what our fast food workers are going through and yet you still lack the courage to support them. Why? Because it's not a popular vote? Maybe because they don't speak English as well as a lot of people do? <clears throat> San Jose is a union city, and all workers, from firefighters to janitors, from nurses and fast food workers, should be supported and have their rights protected. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Good afternoon, council members. Uh, my name is Gabriel Manrique, community organizer with Luna. We support items two, four, and six uh, in the memo from council members Ortiz, Jimenez, and Candelas. In particular, their calls to protect measure funds for spurring affordable housing, changing the way the city distributes park fees, and investing in trust. We have to treat our limited dollars to invest in permanent housing as a precious resource, and we are concerned that mayor will once again try to plan their measure E and sabotage the will of the voters. In addition, we join in support of the more than 30,000 fast food workers to ensure that their labor rights are guaranteed from now on in the creation of the Fast Food Fair Work Ordinance. By ensuring workers know their rights, training and paid time off, San Jose has the opportunity to lead in empowering fast food workers and improving their lives, along with their families and communities. We will continue fighting to guarantee a dignified and safe work environment and for affordable housing. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Uh, good afternoon, council members. Uh, my name is Hector Hernandez. I'm a community leader with Luna. I'm here today to support the creation of the fast food work or in, in the audience. Sorry about that. Uh, fast food workers are a vital um, contributor to the city's labor count, labor force, sorry, and in economy. Uh, they play a crucial role in serving meals to tens of thousands of people, uh, driving the profits of the billion dollar fast food sector. However, frontline fast food workers who are disproportionately um, women and people of color often grapple with job disabilities and unsafe working conditions. Despite, these in the, despite the industry's uh, billion dollar profit, cook, uh, cooks and cashiers endure erratic hours, wage theft, sexual harassment, and other perverse work workplace issues. We firmly believe that the fast food workers um, for work ordinance can be a transformative force by guaranteeing workers know their rights, uh, the right training and pay time off. San Jose has the opportunity to lead the empowered fast food workers in improving their lives and alongside their families. Thank you, next speaker. I'm gonna call um, Dilia Espana, Angelica Garcia, and Cynthia Martinez. Good afternoon, council. My name is Lucy Ortiz. I am the political director at Silicon Valley Rising, and I'm here also to stand in support of fast food workers and ask you to please add them into the budget message. Um, you know, it's funny that we're here on Women's History Month, um, you know, with uh, taking up this issue. A lot of people celebrate by going to happy hours or doing honorariums and stuff like that and celebrating of women. So when in reality, what we're talking about is the people that are represented here, the fast food workers who literally put their lives at risk every day on the job. And so it's really important for us 
to actually stand up and do what's right. History shows that what's right is not always what's popular. But we must take, I believe that government's job is to protect those who are most vulnerable. And your job today is to do that with the fast food workers who are here pleading for you to, for them to have the basic rights. And so I hope you do what's right, even if it's not always what's popular. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. And we'll need the interpreter. Um, hello, my name is Cynthia Martinez. I want to ask everyone who supports knowing our rights training for fast food workers to please stand up for a moment. Can you please stand up? Quiero pedirles a todos a los que apoyan a los trabajadores de comida rápida que están de acuerdo de que los trabajadores tengan un entrenamiento acerca de sus derechos. Por favor, se pueden levantar. I want to ask everyone who supports our right to earn a few days of paid time off to spend with our families to stand up. Please stand up. Quiero que se levanten también todos los trabajadores que necesitan más días de tiempo pagado libre para poder pasar tiempo con sus familias. Levántense, por favor. I want to ask the city council are hearing from these lobby ladies that we should be learning about our rights. What do you think about our bosses that not want us to know about our rights? Y quiero preguntarles a los concejales de la ciudad de San José, ¿por qué ustedes piensan que estas personas que están haciendo cabildeo para en contra de los trabajadores, para que no aprendamos de, sus de, de nuestros derechos, ¿qué creen? que ¿Por qué están haciendo ellos esto? ¿Por qué están haciendo cabildeo y eh, es, eh, pagando mucho dinero para esto? Why do you think they're taking you every day to say no, not to tell workers about their rights? ¿Por qué creen que los empleadores le están diciendo a los trabajadores de comida rápida que no, deben de, no debemos de aprender de nuestros derechos? Why do you think they don't want us to know what to do about our wage theft? ¿Por qué creen que nuestros, emple nuestros empleadores no quieren que aprendamos acerca de lo que es robo de salario? What do you think they don't want us to know what... You turn the mic back on. Your, your time is up. Just finish this translation. Mike. So, food council. ¿Por qué creen que nuestros empleadores no quieren que participemos en el consejo de trabajadores? Okay, your time is up. Next speaker. Go ahead, ma'am. It's your opportunity to speak. Yes. Eh, muy buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Dilia España. Trabajo en Comidas Rápidas hace tres años y vengo apoyando a la... A, a, venimos a que los apoyen a la, esta ley, que pase, porque pa, estamos pasando muchas injusticias en nuestros trabajos, violencia y muchas injusticias y queremos que los... Necesitamos el apoyo más que todo. Gracias. Good afternoon. My name is Delia España. I'm a fast food worker and I've been that for the past three years. I'm here uh, to support the new law that we're asking for you to go ahead and pass because there's a lot of injustice, a lot of violence, and this is what I'm here to support this afternoon. Thank you. Sorry, I'd also like to call down Mabel Ordonez, Duver Rayrin. Pamela Meja and Dionysia Cervasio. And while we wait for them to come down, I'd also like to call Yudi Castro, Ramona Martinez, and Jose Carrasco. Again, you can, um, if you heard your name, please come sit in the front row where it says reserved. First person in the microphone begins speaking. Thank 
que hacer un anuncio. Permítame un momentito, ¿Mm? por favor, gracias. Um, Buenas tardes. Para las personas de que van a presentar su opinión pública, por favor, um, lo que, la manera de que estamos haciendo los servicios de interpretación es de que la persona diga como una o dos oraciones, que pause, después nosotros hacemos la interpretación y después ustedes pueden hablar y así va a correr la, la manera de que vamos a brindar nuestra opinión pública. Gracias. Thank you. Go ahead. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Dionisia Cervacio, trabajo en McDonald's de, 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 en San José de la Planta. Y lo único que les pido que pongan seguridad es en, en el trabajo, porque trabajo de noche. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Donina Cervaso, and I work in the at McDonald's at the plant in San Jose. The only thing that I am requesting is that you please put security at my work because I work at night. Y queremos que nos ayuden, por favor, si a, to, a todo el Congreso. Gracias. And we would like for you all to please help us, uh, you know, to the whole entire council. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Mabel Ordóñez. Soy trabajadora de Comida Rápida. Uh, good afternoon. My name is uh, Mabel Ordinez, and I am a worker of fast food. Hoy quiero alzar mi voz por mi gremio. Necesitamos nuestro trabajo, pero también necesitamos que los empleadores respeten nuestros derechos. Today I am here as a voice for everybody, and we, I would like to say that we all need our jobs, but we also need our employers to respect us. Por eso hoy les quiero pedir por favor que nos apoyen. This is why I'm asking today for you to support us. Que nos capaciten sobre nuestros derechos y sobre todo lo que como trabajadores eh, pues tenemos derecho. And to go ahead and be able to uh, give us the, the, the power because for our rights as workers and more than anything as people. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next speaker. Mi nombre es Jose Carrasco, trabajo para las empresas de Carlos Junior. Good, uh, my name is Jose Carrasco and I work for uh, the Carlos Junior Industries. Y espero que aprueben la ley para que los trabajadores sepan sus derechos, que tengamos un horario fijo, que no nos quiten horas, porque al quitarnos horas, nos están quitando los derechos a vacaciones y días de enfermedad. Uh, yes, and I'm hoping that you go ahead and support the law because so that we can go ahead and have our worker rights as we know them and to have a set schedule and so that they don't take our hours away because if they have a set schedule and also if they don't take our hours away, this means that we will not have less vacation time or sick time. Y espero que tengan en sus mentes a todos esos trabajadores que les dan de comer a mucha gente. I hope that you keep in mind all those workers that feed many people. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. I'd also like to call Tuan Van, um, Axis Condominiums, Jose Paredes, and Marcelo Tagle. Eh, hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Yuri Castro. Soy trabajadora de un software. Estoy aquí apoyando a los trabajadores de comida rápida. Lo que solicito es que se tenga en cuenta los derechos de los trabajadores, que se haga entrenamiento de los derechos, de los beneficios que tenemos como trabajadores y que haya más seguridad. Gracias. Que se hagan, que disculpen, más, que haya más seguridad y más, más beneficios y derechos. Uh, good afternoon. My name is uh, Yuri Crastro, and I, I work at Subway. I'm a fast food worker, and today I'm here requesting your support for the fast food industry, for the rights for the workers, and also for us to have more security. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker.
Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. I'm here today representing the Access Condominiums community in strong support of the March budget message. We understand the budget shortfall presents challenges, but we need to continue focusing on the basics. Ending street homelessness, reducing crime, enhancing public safety, both real and perceived, reducing blight and streamlining city processes that hinder uh, enhancing the city's vibrancy. We applaud the council's collaboration in support of these goals, and we are seeing results. However, there is much more that needs to be done. We encourage you to keep the Back to Basics initiatives moving forward, evening, evening, even excuse me, in these challenging times. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Yeah, good afternoon, <coughs> Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council members. My name is Thornton Van. I'm a resident of District 9. I live in Branham and Chavis neighborhood over 30 years. And I am very concerned about homelessness in our city. I see people live on the streets, nearby the creeks, under overpasses, and other places as well. So I'm here today to ask you to support the mayor budget message, which will help us to get people in the faster. So please vote to pass the message. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. I'd also like to call down Carlos Obergon, Augustina Zhu, and Raul Balaam. Uh, good afternoon, Cancer. My name is Marcelo, and I'm working for Fat Food like over 30 years, and uh, we never see the happy of the workers to be get a better, better benefits. And uh, I think it's a time to guys can approve to help you us to know their what we approvals we need to do and, and all for workers like vacations, like sickly days. So I'm here to support those workers. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. Okay. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Agustina. Trabajo en Taco Bell. Me gustaría conocer más de mis derechos, tanto como ustedes, mis compañeros. ¿Le gustó y lo conocen? Ok. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Agustina. I work at pa uh, Taco Bell, and I would like uh, to know more of, of regards to my rights as well as and, and, and for my co-workers as well, as, as for you as well. Ya no más abuso contra los trabajadores de comida rápida y más seguridad. Gracias. And for no more uh, abuse for the workers in the fast food industry as well as more security. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Raúl. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Raúl. Um, estoy aquí gracias um, Gracias por permitirnos estar aquí y me gustaría que nos apoyara sobre la comida rápida. Uh, thank you for allowing us to be here and um, I would like for you to support us here with the fast food industry. Y nada más queremos saber uh, nuestros derechos en la de la comida rápida para que nosotros sabemos nuestros derechos como los managers que nos pongan um, que nos enseñen nuestros derechos sobre la comida rápida. And I would only like to know, you know, in regards to our rights as fast food workers, to know our rights, like the managers, for them to give us like uh, information in regards to our rights as fast food workers. Porque muchos uh, managers Los store managers a veces no, no nos dicen nuestros derechos y 
Por eso a veces no sabemos cuando pasa un accidente o cuando se corta un dedo o algo así. Because many of, a, many of the managers, the store managers, do not tell us about our rights. And so, like, if we have an accident or if we cut a finger or something like that. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es José Paredes y trabajo en la franquicia de McDonald's. En el trabajo nos enfrentamos a abuso porque no conocemos nuestros derechos. Good afternoon. My name is Jose Paredes and I work for the McDonald's franchise. At work, uh, we are facing uh, a lot of abuses because we do not know our rights. Nuestros emple empleadores no quieren que conozcamos nuestros derechos porque no quieren tener que ser responsables con sus trabajadores. Our employers do not want us to know about our rights because they do not want to be responsible for their workers. Apoye a los trabajadores de comida rápida, no a los cabilderos. Um, support the fast food workers, not the lobbyists. Apoye el entrenamiento de los trabajadores sobre sus derechos y el tiempo libre pagado. Muchas gracias. Support the fast food workers and uh, please uh, the training for the workers and their rights and their time off paid. Thank you. I'd also like to call Ofisa Patty. Mengya Lin. Hola, buenas tardes. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold um, on. Ofisa Patty, Mengya Lin, and Tamara Chavez or Nicole Bucalo. Both names are on the card. Okay, go ahead, sir. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Carlos. Soy trabajador de comida rápida. Estoy aquí para que nos den su apoyo para capacitación para conocer más nuestros derechos. Gracias. Good afternoon. My name is Carlos. I'm a fast food worker and I'm here to request your support for us to be able to have training in regards to our rights so that we can know them better. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. <clears throat> Hello, Mayor and Council. I'm Ofisa Pazi, Advocacy Coordinator at Asian Americans for Community Involvement, and also a member of the Real Coalition. <clears throat> While we appreciate the city's efforts to address the housing crisis, the proposed solutions of sweeps, tents, and congregate shelters offer minimal relief and do not address the root causes of homelessness. As an organization that provides health, behavioral health, and wellness services to vulnerable communities, we understand the direct link between housing and health outcomes. We believe that everyone deserves a safe and stable place to call home, and that, and that investing in permanent affordable housing is a long-term solution that addresses the root causes of the issue. Therefore, we urge you to consider investing in permanent affordable housing as a key component of the city's strategy to end homelessness and improve the health outcomes of our communities. Thank you. Next speaker. Go ahead, Mike. Good afternoon, Mayor and members of City Council. My name is Magna, and I'm with the Asian Law Alliance. I'm also a member of the Real Coalition. I'm here to speak against the efforts to divert funding from permanent housing solutions to short-term solutions. Temporary shelters and encampment sweeps at the expense of permanent housing projects will not address the core issues of the housing and homelessness crisis, and we need a comprehensive approach to address housing instability and the growing population of the unhoused. Um, and we also need to be fully committed to permanent housing solutions and ensuring we have enough affordable housing options for community members and families in San Jose, which is why we're asking the city to preserve our Measure E funds for our permanent solutions and not temporary measures. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. I'm also going to call down um, Rom Romualda Alcazar, Evelyn Solorio, and Baudio Franco. Go ahead. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, my name is Tamara Chavez and I'm the Regional Director at PATH Santa Clara County. This council and mayor's relentless focus on ending homelessness is historic. You have added life-saving interim shelter beds which succeed when staffed by skilled professionals trained in trauma-informed care. The proposed enhancements to homelessness prevention, like targeted financial assistance or family reunification, will protect people from ever enduring homelessness. And we can say for firsthand experience that our neighbors living in unsheltered along the rivers need more support to leave the dangerous conditions there. The success of all these proposals, however, is completely dependent on the availability of permanent housing. The balanced investments in Measure E help San Jose become the largest city in California to actually decrease homelessness in 2023. Now more than ever, we need to prioritize all available dollars for affordable and permanent supportive housing. We are committed to working with you all on strategies to strengthen partnerships with the county, reduce the costs of constructing permanent housing, and raise new revenue so we can overcome this crisis sustainably for you. Thank you. Next speaker. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Romualda Alcázar Cruz. Good afternoon. My name is Romualda Alcázar Cruz. Y estoy aquí para decirles un poquito, para contarles un poquito de lo que nosotros los trabajadores de comida rápida estamos pasando en el trabajo. And I'm here to uh, let you know a little bit of what us fast food workers are going through at our jobs. Yo trabajo en Wendy's y desde que yo entré a trabajar hace seis años a esta compañía, a este restaurante de comida rápida, mis derechos han sido atropellados. And my, um, I work at Wendy's and I've been working there since like about six, I started working there six years ago. And since I've worked there, I would just like to let you know that my rights as a worker have been ran over. He sido víctima de robo de salario. I've been a victim of uh, wage um, theft. Y no puedo tomar a mis días de, de mis horas de enfermedad. And I cannot take uh, my time. Uh, I cannot take my days or my uh, my sick hours because they won't pay them. Tampoco tenemos uh, días libres como para cuidar a, a mi esposo. Mi esposo se enfermó muy fuerte y no pude cuidarlo ni en mi casa ni en el hospital. And um, also, uh, they, we don't have days off like to be able to take care of my husband. My husband got extremely ill, and I was not able to take care of him, nor at my house or at the hospital. And Uh, and I also believe that the time has come for our rights that they, um, they put people that are outside of the company, not in the same fast food industry, and they come um, like external trainings and they go ahead and train us in regards to our rights. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, also Rosa Vasquez, Fernando Cubitas, and Martha Hernandez. Hola, mi nombre es Evelyn. Yo trabajo en Comida Rápida y vine aquí para que nos respeten nuestros días de enfermedad. Hello, my name is Evelyn and I work in the fast food industry. I come here for to request that you respect us on our days off. Y también que nos den más seguridad a nosotros que a nosotros que peligramos nuestras vidas todos los días. And for, I also request for them, for you to please give us more security for us for the days that, because there, our lives are in danger. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. I'd also like to call Juan Gutierrez and Laura Reyes. Trabajo en McDonald's 23 años y no tenemos ni una semana de vacaciones. Necesitamos que nos ayuden para tener una semana de vacaciones. Gracias. Hello. 
Hello, my name is uh, Rosa Vasquez, and I've worked for McDonald's for 23 years. Uh, we do not have a, a week of vacation, and I'm here because we need your help to help us so that we can get a week of vacation. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hola, yo me llamo Laura Reyes y trabajo en Burbiquín. En Burbiquín han pasado cosas muy desagradables. Hello, my name is Laura, Laura Reyes and I work for Burger King. And in Burger King there have been many unpleasant things that have happened. Que por no saber por nuestros derechos. Because we do not know uh, our own rights. No, no supe defenderme. I, I was not able to know how to be able to defend myself. Me tuvieron trabajando varias horas abortando. Uh, they had me working for many hours while I was having a miscarriage. Es por eso que estoy aquí para que nos apoyen en los derechos para que podamos defendernos. This is why I am here uh, for you to support us with our rights and so that we know how to defend ourselves. Porque para ellos no es importante nuestra vida, pero para nuestros hijos sí. Because for them, our lives are not important, but for our children, they are. Es por eso que hoy estoy aquí y esperemos que contemos con su apoyo y nos den capacitaciones a todos los trabajadores para poder defendernos y no pasar esos momentos desagradables. Uh, this is why I'm here in hopes that I may be able to count on your support that they give us trainings to all of the workers so that we know how to defend ourselves and not to have to go through um, unfortunate desired things. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I don't see anybody queued up so I'm going to call some more names. Esmeralda Varelis from Destination Home, Maria Maldonado, Richard Tien, George from Monte Vista HOA. I can't pronounce your last name. So if, if, if I said any of your names, please come up to the microphone, because I'm calling names, but I'm not seeing a lot of movement. Antonio, as folks yes. are coming down, would you also mind just repeating for those in the wing room that they will have an opportunity yes. to participate and I, how that will work? I know we've had some new people join yes. in the wing. Thank you. Um, so if you're in the wing room, I have a bunch of speaker cards that you've already turned in. Um, so you will get called, and then um, we're going back periodically and checking for additional speaker cards. Um, I'll, I will be getting to you. Great. And then um, as people, sometimes when people speak in the main room, they leave, and security will start bringing people over from the wing into the council chambers as we get room. Okay, thank you. Hello, Esmeralda Virelas with Destination Home. We are deeply concerned at the possibility of diverting Measure E funding dedicated to affordable housing production. The lack of affordable housing options is a serious threat to our community. 70,000 families in our community can afford to pay rent, and this is the primary factor driving more of our neighbors into homelessness every day. We appreciate the council's interest in adding more shelter options but a narrow focus on expanding shelter alone will not give us the results we wish. To make meaningful change and progress, we need a multifaceted approach that includes both shelter and permanent housing. We cannot continue to pit one need against the other. Let's come up with a balanced plan that advances both strategies and start exploring how we can raise new revenue to address both of these community needs. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Maria Maldonado and it's an honor to be here today. More than nine years organizing fast food workers. Um, the horrors I have heard about wage theft, sexual harassment, retaliation. Too many times workers in fast food don't have a place to speak up about these injustices out of fear of being ignored or worse, retaliates against them. Workers need a safe place to learn about their rights and learn how to hold employers who break the law accountable. Most of the stories I hear are about bosses who value profits more than safety of their workers. 
like Laura just mentioned. Today, you don't just see workers, you see children, you see families to be affected when workers can take pen time off or are refused to take sick days. These workers and their families deserve better. They work hard and they deserve dignity and safety at work. San Jose can be an example for how we treat and protect fast food workers. It's time to lead. Your time is up. Thank you. Next speaker. Next speaker. I'd also like to call Oscar and Waskar Castro. Um, hi there, my name is Rich Tew and I'm a franchise owner uh, of two McDonald's restaurants. Uh, one of them in San Jose District 1. Came from Vietnam with nothing, uh, with my parents and saved and my dream was to be a business owner. Um, we, you know, ever since day one, a year and a half ago, we've increased uh, uh, our labor by 21% and added jobs, rewards, bonuses. And this year, uh, January and April, it's going to be another 18%. Think about that. That's, that's 39% of labor increase. Um, it makes no sense for San Jose to add additional duplicate ordinances and, and you know, just regulations. Please protect the locally owned uh, San Jose restaurants and vote no on any new uh, mandates. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Uh, George Shumkevich, Monte Vista HOA. We support Mayor Mahan's budget message and thank Dev Davis for her work on that budget. Monte Vista's 750 residents face the Los Gatos Creek in Midtown District 6. Every day we see homeless activity, including petty criminal activity as the homeless enter our property, stealing our water, electricity, packages, and decorative items on the porches. This winter, we had to close our free library because the homeless were stealing the books and using them for kindling. Residents met with mentally ill homeless who accost us with a bat, expose themselves to women. We don't feel safe. As a result, we now spend $10,000 a month on security guards and repairs to our property caused by illegal activities increasing the already high cost of living for our residents. Please support the budget. Thank you. Next speaker. Hear me? Is this on? Yeah. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Oscar Quiroz Medrano. Um, I'm deeply concerned about redirecting Measure E funds away from uh, preservation and new developments of affordable housing. We know that, uh, oh, I believe that managing the problem through this interim housing, it helps for a short time. We're just going to be here stuck again. It's going to cost more money than we have later down the line after those 10 years. So I do see that we should be addressing the root cause of this problem. And I also see the home, the program uh, Home Away, or bus, when we bus houseless folks outside of San Jose, what's going to happen when they do, when they go back home? Are they going to get the services that they're really going to need? Because we don't have the funds to maintain it here. So we're not, it just seems that this is a little, uh, a little not really thought out fully when we're thinking about addressing the houselessness problem when we're addressing about the issues that we have right now and we should be leading the country when it comes to addressing these problems because we can thank you next speaker good afternoon council my name is Oscar Castro for the working partnerships USA uh, we are deeply concerned that yet again the mayor's March, March budget message uh, proposes to shift measure E funds away from affordable housing production our community is facing a severe affordable housing crisis, as we all know. The exorbitant cost of housing in our city has left approximately 70,000 families rent burdened and struggling to simply get by. Our insufficient supply of affordable housing and a housing landscape that creates grave housing insecurity for renters lays the ground for various impacts, including increased homelessness. We cannot lose sight of that without opportunities for permanently affordable sources of housing. Temporary solutions will be just that. We urge council to protect affordable housing funding in this year's budget and to collaborate in a genuine, pragmatic manner to develop a real plan for funding and sustaining a comprehensive approach to our housing and homelessness crisis. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have Josie Mooney. Um, the last name looks like Kraus, Mike Kraus maybe. So Josie Mooney, Mike Kraus, Bob Brownstein, 
Joanna Garcia, Malike Regis. So first person to the microphone, please come up. Everybody else, please sit in the front row. No. Well, good afternoon, Councilman and Mayor. My name is Mike Krause, and I'm the president of the Penitentia Neighborhood Association. Um, Penitentia Neighborhood Association is located in North San Jose. It consists of approximately uh, about 872 households there. I'm here to voice our support for the mayor's Matt Man, Matt Man's March budget uh, message for the fiscal year 24-25 uh, in its entirety. Uh, as a, you know, as budget, trying to trying to find any budget is difficult, whether it's for a home, for a, for a city, and you have to make hard choices. The priority issues identified in the memorandum are consistent with the priorities that PNA uh, wants. Thank you very much. Thank you, next speaker. Also, Edgar Hernandez, Juan Garcia, and Beatrice Avila. Hello, my name is Joanna, and I'm here today to support fast food workers. Because like many of you, I also depend on fast food, working parents, busy students, a lot of us in this community. But hearing the stories of workers facing not knowing what to do on their job when they're feeling ill, feeling like they're forced to stay in the job. I cannot continue supporting the industry if it's going to look like this. I really hope that San Jose can be the leader to improve this industry and make this job a good job for not only the parents and young adults that work in the field, but also the families that depend on them. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. Good afternoon, my name is Josie Mooney. I am the Deputy Executive Director of SEIU 10 to 1. We represent about 60,000 workers in Northern California, including here in the city of San Jose. I've had the opportunity to sit down with some of you in the last few months, and I very much appreciate those of you who have taken a stand for justice for the fast food workers here. I can't tell you enough how important it is that you listen to the voices of the workers and know in your heart that they speak the truth about the conditions in which they currently work. It is simply unacceptable. I have a story like Laura's, except my story ended completely differently. She had a miscarriage at work because the boss refused to let her leave. Thank you. Your time is up. Thank you. Next speaker. Next speaker. Good afternoon. In a tough budget year, you can't give residents everything that they want, but you can give us the truth. Interim housing is neither physically or organizationally designed for the long term. Without substantial construction of long-term affordable units, San Jose will not be creating emergency interim housing, but rather permanent deteriorating shelters. And if the city balances its budget, assuming other organizations will finance our permanent deteriorating shelters, then we will be budgeting using phantom revenues, and that is fiscal irresponsibility. Finally, city leaders should not support an industry disinformation campaign against a fast food workers ordinance that in fact is neither costly or unfair or damaging to small businesses. Give us the Thank you. Next speaker. Thank you. 
Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Juan García, trabajo en McDonald's y quiero pedir el apoyo del concejales y el alcalde para la aprobación de las leyes que nos ayuden, porque en los trabajos no nos ayudan con los derechos, no nos dan forma de que aprendamos nuestros derechos. Oh, mi nombre es Juan Antonio García. Uh, hello, my name is Juan Antonio Garcia. I work in fast food here in San Jose, and I'm here to request uh, your support for fast food workers. Hay, pues, otra parte que uh, me lastimé la espalda en el trabajo, y los doctores te mandan a trabajar así lastimado. A ellos no les importa cómo vaya uno a trabajar. Sí, es otra parte que tengo que comentar. Y uh, espero que nos apoyen con esas leyes, por favor. Muchas gracias. Uh, I was recently injured on the work, at work on my back, and I had to continue working like that. My employers don't care when we're injured on the job, and this is why we're asking for support. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Beatriz Ávila, soy trabajadora de comida rápida y estoy aquí porque necesitamos entrenamientos en nuestros lugares de trabajo. Hello, my name is Beatriz Ávila. I am a fast food worker and I am here because we need to learn our rights as fast food workers. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. I'd also like to call down Ava Lopez. Amelda Arroyo, Lords Mejia, and Filberta Sanchez. Go ahead. Um, hi, I'm Malik Regis. I work for fast food, and I'm here asking for um, and to help us with our um, know our rights and our laws and safer work environments for everyone who works fast food. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. Uh, buenas tardes, mi nombre es Imelda Arroyo. Yo trabajo para McDonald's desde hace 18 años. Y este, pues estamos peleando que, que respeten nuestros derechos porque nos enfermamos y no nos quieren pagar los días de enfermedad. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Imelda Torres, and Arroyo. I'm sorry. Uh, my name is Imelda Arroyo, and I've worked for McDonald's for the past 18 years. We are fighting for them to respect our rights because we get sick and we don't get paid for when we are sick. Y cuando tratamos de hablar con los gerentes, por lo que hacen es quitarnos horas. And so when we try to speak to the managers, what they do is they take away our hours. Yeah. Thank you. That's all, thank you. Thank you, next speaker. Darlie um, via Mizar, please come on down too. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Lourdes Mejia. Uh, yo trabajo en comida rápida desde hace 20 años. Good afternoon. My name is Lourdes Mejia, and I've worked in the fast food industry for since about 20 years. Me gustaría que ustedes se enfocaran también en mirar en los restaurantes de comida rápida. I would like for you to focus as well and seeing uh, the restaurants, uh, the fast food restaurants. Porque estamos, uh, estamos ahorita en, en un proceso de que no, nuestros derechos no nos hacen válidos. Uh, because right now we are in a position in which um, our rights, they're not validating them. 
y me gustaría que de verdad les pido que se enfoquen en nosotros como trabajadores de comida rápida. Nos sentimos como olvidados por ustedes. Thank you. We would like for you to uh, please focus on us fast food workers because we feel forgotten. Thank you and have a good week. Good, good afternoon, sorry. Next speaker, also Janet Cajuano and Abby Wynn, Ashley Wynn, sorry, come on down. Hola, buenas tardes, mi nombre es Guadalupe Sánchez, trabajo para Comida Rápida. Tengo 20 años trabajando y quisiéramos su apoyo, su voto. Muchas gracias. Good afternoon, my name is Guadalupe Sánchez. I work in the fast food for about 20 years and I'm requesting for your uh, support. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next speaker. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Ana López y trabajo en McDonald's. Y vengo frente a ustedes para que por medio de ustedes nos puedan apoyar. Good afternoon. My name is Ana López. I work in McDonald's and I come before you so that you, through you, I am, we will be able to be supported. Para que ya no haya más discriminación porque lo que nosotros queremos que nos respeten nuestros derechos. Because so that there will no longer be any discrimination because what we want is for them to respect our rights. Y que nos quiten más, que ya no queremos que nos quiten más horas. And we do not want them to take any more hours away from us. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next speaker. Ted Zafiris, come on down, and Ravathi, and Allison Lingaloni. Buenas tardes con todos. Mi nombre es Yanes Kawana. Yo trabajo en McDonald's 11 años. Y aquí vengo a representar con todos mis compañeros, con todos los trabajadores, que haya más derechos, ¿no? que haya reconocido como trabajador acá, y fast food, que haya trabajo como descanso pagados y full one kai para nuestro vejez, y que haya pues, más seguridad. Yo trabajo de noche, de día. Y, okay. uh, good afternoon, my name is Yanis uh, Gobana. I have worked at McDonald's for 11 years. I come before you because I represent my co-workers as well as all the workers uh, for all the rights that we would like. Um, as you know, we work there, but um, we would like for there to be work uh, with time off paid, a 401k for, one, for our old age, and security at our work because I work and during the day as well as the night. Muchas gracias. Que Dios le bendiga a todos. Que, cara, que tomen carta en asunto para todos. Uh, thank you so much. May God bless all of you. And if you could please take um, notice to the issue at hand. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Berta Sánchez. Trabajo para las empresas de Jack in the Box. Y vengo a pedirle a ustedes que por favor apoyen nuestra ley para que nos hagan reconocer nuestros derechos, principalmente horas pagadas de enfermedad. Good afternoon. My name is Berta Sánchez. I work for Jack in the Box Enterprises. And I'm here requesting your for you to support our law so that they can go ahead and recognize our rights and to give us paid time off. Lo más importante es aquí que respeten, uh, pues sí, los derechos de uno. Mi caso es, uh, mi madre falleció. Uh, what's most important here is that they respect our rights. Uh, in my case, my mother passed away. 
la supervisora no me dejó ir y yo me salí. So ella me despidió por eso. The supervisor wasn't allowing me to leave, so I left and she fired me because of that. Le dije que me pagara mis horas de enfermedad porque supuestamente yo tengo 20 años para trabajando ya quien de más y nunca tuve horas de enfermedad. And so I asked her to pay me my sick time off because I've been working at Jack in the Box for 20 years uh, and, you know, I've never had any uh, sick time off paid. Por favor, les, to les pido que tomen cartas en el asunto para que nos hagan valer nuestros derechos. I ask you please to please take notice of what I of the issue at hand because they do not value our rights. Yo sé que ustedes pueden. Muchas gracias. Y si se puede. And I do know that you can. Thank you so much. Yes, you can. Thank you. Next speaker. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council Members. I am Ashley Wynn from Asian Law Alliance. I'm here to support the Fast Food Fair Work Ordinance. While there has been claims by the fast food industry that the ordinance would negatively impact small mom and pop businesses, the law exclusively targets companies with over 30 establishments, which clearly do not fit the mom and pop business model. We need you, as our local representatives, to stand with workers who are your constituents, who voted for you, and who put your trust to protect them. If our goal is genuine economic revitalization, reducing wealth inequality, homelessness prevention, and neighborhood prosperity, we must prioritize the empowerment of our working people and not falsely use small local businesses as a scapegoat to not meet the needs of fast food workers. Thank you so much for your time and consideration. Thank you, next speaker. Also come on down, Emily Ann Ramos and Manuel Salazar. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council Members. My name is Ted Zafiris, and I am here to strongly oppose the costly restaurant ordinance. I'm a franchisee of a national restaurant chain. I'm a local business owner, and I own and operate two stores in San Jose <clears throat> with about 50 total employees. I follow all state and local laws. I'm not a multimillionaire, but on the contrary, uh, I have been struggling to stay in business. Um, I have operated in San Jose since 2020, and since opening, I have been operating at a loss, and I'm scared I won't survive in San Jose, especially with Fast Act coming in a couple weeks. As a franchisee of a large franchise corporation, I am the small business owner. I am responsible for all my loans. I'm responsible for all my leases. I have personal guarantees. Thank you. Next speaker. Good afternoon, Allison Singalani with Silicon Valley at Home. Uh, in the mayor's budget message, he tells us that City has invested $256 million between Measure E and other sources to support the creation of more than 1,500 affordable and permanent supportive housing units since 2020. That is a one-time investment of just $165,000 of city money per affordable home. And these are permanent, full apartments with kitchens, bathrooms, and in many cases, multiple bedrooms serving individuals and families in our communities for decades to come. The latest emergency interim shelters are $200,000 to $250,000 simply to build, and that does not count the ongoing operating costs. Each of these affordable homes leverages state, federal, and private funds to bring hundreds of millions of dollars of investment into San Jose and will continue to be an asset serving our communities for decades to come. Please preserve the city's Measure E dollars for permanent affordable housing. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Good afternoon, Honorable Mayor and Council Members. I'm a renter in San Jose and would like to bring your attention to increasing rent burden in our community. The lack of affordable housing options is a serious threat to our community. 
70,000 families in our community are rent burdened, and it is the primary factor driving displacement and pushing more of our neighbors into homelessness every day. We all agree that we must act with urgency to bring our neighbors in from the streets and into permanent homes. However, we are deeply concerned that the proposed priorities in the mayor's budget message are neither fully reflective of the needs of the city nor sustainable over time. We ask that you continue your commitment to addressing the crisis of homelessness and displacement by maintaining measured spending plan that supports both the provision of shelter and the creation of homes people can uh, permanently afford. Rather than pitting solution against one another, we must seek new. Thank you. Next speaker. I would also like to call down Regina Celestine Williams and Javier Hernandez. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay, great. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, Madam Vice Mayor, and Council Members. My name is Emily Ann Ramos with SB at Home and the Housing Justice Working Group in the Real Coalition. So coming down your policy pipeline is a tenant preference policy. It is a very good policy that targets new affordable housing for those in our communities and those who are at most risk of displacement. However, by diverting funds that we need to develop the affordable housing, uh, we weaken the efficacy of this policy. So as we look at addressing the homeless, uh, as we look at uh, addressing homelessness in our community, we must do more than just manage it. We must work to bring people out of homelessness by creating more affordable housing and preventing our families from going into homelessness by investing in preservation and anti-displacement policies. Homelessness is a housing problem. Every analysis shows that the rate of homelessness are a reflection of high and unaffordable rents and not the rates of addiction or mental illness or even poverty. Um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, next speaker. Also, Brian Holm, come on down. Harsh Guy and Catherine Arejo. Good afternoon, council members. In the face of challenging financial conditions, securing funding for residential developments has become notably difficult. Prioritizing streamlining of approval processes for housing projects, meeting objective standards, coupled with initiatives to lessen fees and taxes, and expedite building permits has become crucial. Additionally, enhancing the urban village planning process, achieving blanket CEQA clearances uh, for these are commendable actions towards creating more conductive environment for development. With all that said, uh, it is critical to acknowledge that market rate housing alone will not sufficiently address the depth of affordability needed for a community. While luxury apartments filtering may have offered some relief over time, this approach will take decades to trickle down to lower rent levels. Therefore, it is clear that market rate developments alone cannot meet the urgent demand for housing that working people can afford today. This is where the city's inclusionary housing ordinance plays a pivotal role. Despite adding marginal costs to development, it remains our most efficient tool in ensuring that lower middle income renters can access affordable housing options. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. Good afternoon, mayor and council members. My name is Javier, and I, I am a IHSS provider in San Jose City District 4, represented by council member David Fahan. I'm here with my brothers and sisters from SE IU 2015, representing California long-term care workers to ask for your support in protecting workers by including the fast food fair work ordinance in the budget. As care workers, we know what, what it's like to work long and difficult hours, and we know people working in the fast food industry often. Thank you. Your time is up. Also come on down, Olivia Ortiz, Aurora Solis, Maciel Picado, and Oscar, um, Oscar Polo. Go ahead. Hello everyone, my name is Harsh Raj Guy. I own three fast food restaurants in the city of San Jose. 
Uh, my father came to this country 30 years ago and started in a Burger King kitchen. Uh, most of the operators that you're going to meet here today are immigrants and people of color, men and women of people uh, of color. Uh, I just wanted to say that we're not billionaires and we're not a corporate lobby. We're small business owners. Uh, first of all, I also want to say that my livelihood and my success is dependent on the people that work for me. All these amazing people in purple shirts, they work for us and, and their well-being is important to us because without them, we wouldn't be successful and I wouldn't be able to put food on the table for my, for my children. As you know, the state has passed a $20 minimum wage. In order for our business to survive, we're going to have to take price increases and cut hours. Uh, that affects low-income people. 20% of our sales in San Jose come from EBT SNAP for people who don't have access to kitchens. We're going to have to replace people with computers and artificial intelligence in order to keep our business alive. So I'm, I'm, I'm asking you guys to uh, keep this out of our city. Uh, we've got a lot of headwinds coming for our business, and I want to make sure that we keep jobs for Thank you. Next speaker. Good afternoon, members of the council. My name is Aurora Solis. I live in District 7, and I am a community le uh, leader with Vecinos Activos. And I am here to ask that you assign Measure E money the way it was assigned from the beginning. This money was uh, originally assigned for affordable housing. It is not a secret that affordable housing is needed. In fact, there are 70,000 families in our community that are rent burdened and it is the primary factor driving displacement and more of our neighbors into homelessness every day. However, it is important to stress that housing is needed for families. I kindly ask you that you leave affordable housing funds alone for this year and the years to come. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Good afternoon. My name is Olivia Ortiz. Um, and I'm here to share my concerns. We're deeply concerned that the mayor's March budget message once again proposed to shift Measure E funding away from affordable housing production. The lack of affordable housing option is a serious threat to our community. 70,000 families in our community are rent burdened, and it is a primary factor dri driving displacement and more of our neighbors into homelessness every day. We appreciate the city, the, the council interest in adding more shelters options in the city but a narrow focus on expanding shelters alone will not yield results. We must continue to build affordable housing as well. Instead of pitting one need against the other, let's come up with a balance plan that advances both the charities and starts putting how are we, can, we can raise new revenue to address both of the dire community needs. Please protect affordable housing funding in this year's budget and let's come together to develop a, a real plan for the funding and sustaining a comprehensive approach to our housing. Thank you. Next speaker. I would also, I'm going to call a few more names. Stephanie Nino, Guadalupe Sanchez, uh, Morelia Orianas. Go ahead. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Regina Celestin Williams, and I am a D3 resident for almost 10 years and the executive director of SV at Home. We appreciate all of the work that the city has done to provide shelter to those living unhoused. This is a shared moral commitment, but must be placed in our community context. Uh, providing more affordable housing has been in the top three priorities in the city's focus area survey for years. This is noted in the council member from Ortiz, Candelas, and Jimenez. Um, what they didn't say is that providing affordable housing, which has been left out, is a much higher priority for San Jose's lower income residents and residents who are black, Latinx, Vietnamese, compared to other wealthier residents in the city. These are our communities suffering under rent burden, overcrowding, and at risk of displacement and ending up unhappy. Thank you. Next speaker. 
Okay, I'm gonna, I don't see anybody in the front row, so I'm gonna continue calling names. I know a bunch of people just left. Um, Elisa, Jesus Solario, John Hale, Hansa, and last name's C-H-A-U-S, Chaus from Burger King. Go ahead. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Maurilia Arellanes. Eh, trabajo en McDonald's. He trabajado por 26 años aquí en San José. Y estoy aquí para pedir su apoyo para que podamos recibir uh, entrenamiento para conocer nuestros derechos porque ya, porque al igual que yo hay muchos de nuestros compañeros que no conocen sus derechos Good afternoon My name is uh, Mariela Are Arellanes and I have worked at McDonald's for 26 years here in San Jose I am here requesting your support uh, for us to receive training to be able to know our rights because just like I, myself, and my other co-workers, we do not know our rights. También para que no nos corten horas en el trabajo porque es lo que está sucediendo últimamente, que nos están quitando horas. Eh, en mi caso, eh, pienso que uno no puede sobrevivir con 10 horas o 12 horas a la semana. Es muy poco, nadie sobrevive con eso. Um, also, um, because we are requesting that they do not take our hours away at work because this has been happening a lot. They've been taking our, our, my hours away. In my case, I think that one cannot survive just working 10 to 12 hours a week. It's not enough money to be able to do that. Time is up. Next speaker. Y trabajo en Togos. Good afternoon. My name is Julie Sevilla and I work in Togos. Le quería pedir, por favor, eh, y con mucha urgencia, que puedan apoyar a la legislación. Uh, I would like to please ask you urgently to please support um, surveillance. A nosotros como trabajadores de comida rápida. For us as fast food workers. Eh, escuché a uno de, eh, de los dueños de franquicias que en este caso ellos no son eh, millonarios, ¿no? Uh, I've heard something in regards to the owners of the franchises that, you know, they're not millionaires, right? Pero solo nosotros como trabajadores queremos respeto, queremos seguridad, queremos muchas posibilidades positivas porque nosotros somos los que mueve esa empresa. Uh, but us here as workers, what, we're, what we would like, we would like respect, security, and more positive possibilities because that, that's what we want, to be secure. Eso es todo y, y espero de su apoyo de cada uno de ustedes. Muchas gracias. Uh, that is all and I, I'm hoping for every, each and one of your support. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Jesús Solorio, soy organizador de eh, Comida Rápida. Uh, por mi experiencia, yo he vivido muchas cosas con los trabajadores, mucho abuso de parte de los, sus empleadores. Jesús uh, Good afternoon, my name is uh, Jesús Orio, and I'm a fast food worker. And what I have experienced in my life is that there has been a lot of abuse of the workers in the fast food. Yeah, hay mucho robo de salario, no les quieren pagar sus días de enfermedad. So les pedimos de favor que apoyen esta ley. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, salary wage theft, and um, they don't want to pay us for our days uh, of sick days. And I thank you very much for your support. Thank you. 
Thank you, next speaker. Also, come on down, Jorge Aguirre, um, Joe, I, I can't read the last name. It starts with an M, M-A-R. So Joe, M-A-R something. Um, again, Jorge Aguirre and Tina Lujano, or maybe it's Jim Lujano. Sorry, go ahead. Hi, my name is John Haley. I'm uh, a franchisee at Burger King, and I own one Burger King. And I've been in business over 20 years. In my time, we hire minors from 16, trained them local, and became a doctor, became engineer. By having this restaurant ordinance, we already could not afford $20. We're going to close. And please vote no. If you have, uh, we have following the rule, everybody should call labor department. Uh, whatever we have, you could not afford a sexual harassment policy we have, they should follow that. By having another law, it's not good, uh, it's not a good business to close small business like us. And I'm an immigrant, I start from Africa, and I have only work at the a uh, restaurant cook, and then became a franchisee. So by working hard, by following. Thank you. Next speaker. I think that may have been Juan Lujano on that, that last name that I called. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Altaf Chaus, and I own the Burger King. I'm an individual, small individual person. I work in fast food for the last 36 years, and I worked 17 years as a cook, dishwasher, everything, and become a franchisee, saving money. Now, if we pass this law again, we're going to have burden. I have four Burger King, and I had to close one this year because I can't afford any more. And if you guys are going to add up the more burden on us, we will be closing all the stores soon. So I really appreciate your help to keep us alive and do that. And I had found $100,000 in my Burger King, somebody left it, and I turned into the police on five years ago on my birthday. I just want to bring it this to you guys. That's honest person I am. And we like, we like to consider us to be survived. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. Also, Delma Hernandez, come on down, and Alyssa Serrano. Hello, uh, my name's uh, Jorge Aguirre, and I, uh, I'm a district manager at a local, uh, with the local franchisee here in, the, here in San Jose. Uh, I just want to strongly oppose my, uh, the op opposition to the costly uh, restaurant ordinance. Uh, working in quick, ser quick service for the past 20 years, it's uh, given me the opportunity to build up and uh, build a career with them, uh, and even become partners, you know? Um, I mean, as it, it's been for the past three, four years, we've been struggling to make profits. And uh, we're basically working for the banks, la landlords, and the franchises. So adding these extra costs is going to, instead of bringing more jobs, is going to help us, is going to close our, down the businesses. So uh, please uh, vote no on this measure. It's not going to help anybody out. Thank you. I just wanted to announce, um, I'm getting questions from the public on when they'll be called. I don't know. I have 74 more names to call. Um, so just keep an ear out for your name. I'm only calling people one time. Um, so if you hear your name, come and sit in the front row, and the next speaker can go ahead. Oh, damn. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Juan Angel Lujano, and I'm here with the South Bay Community Land Trust. I strongly oppose the mayor's budget due to its short-term vision and no viable solutions for a low-income community. The mayor's solution to addressing our housing crisis is to house our unhoused community in what is essentially a quick-build prison. This does not address the root cause of the issue. We need to protect our Measure E funds and invest in preservation and the creation of affordable housing. Thank you.
Hello, City Council. My name is Alyssa Serrano. I'm a San Jose resident, South Bay Community Land Trust Board member and representative for Mid Penn Housing, a Bay Area and Coastal Regional Affordable Developer, Service Provider, and Property Manager. Mid Penn San Jose portfolio includes 14 properties with a 203 unit project VTA Capital Station in the pipeline. This project is in partnership with VTA and Santa Clara County Office of Supportive Housing and will provide 20 203 affordable rental homes, including 50 PSH units and 50 units for extremely low income households, addressing a critical need for the community. City funding is crucial for projects like this to leverage federal and state funding. Diverting Measure E revenue entirely to interim solutions could delay or scrap uh, vital affordable developments. I support the advocacy efforts of the San Jose Preservation Collaborative focused on keeping residents housed in existing units. The pipeline for these future preservation projects like community land trusts could also be in jeopardy. Thank you. Next speaker, I'm also going to call down Daniela B, Tony Lamb, Don Copen, and Kishan Kumar. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Delma Hernandez. I'm an organizer with South Bay Community Land Trust and a board member at LUNA. I'm also a District 5 resident. I'm here to urge the City Council to support the Fast Food Fair Work Ordinance and realign one of the mayor's focus areas in the budget proposal to better match the community's priorities. Despite the mayor's proposal, the critical need for providing more affordable housing can no longer be overlooked. The mayor's suggestion to redirect Measure E funds away from affordable housing contradicts the community's demands for more affordable housing options. With 70,000 rent burden families in our community, the lack of affordable housing remains a serious threat, contributing to displacement and homelessness. By increasing Measure E housing funds rather than reducing them, we can take realistic step forward, step forwards um, towards addressing our housing challenges. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hi, my name is Tony Lamb, and I'm a 43-year 40, resident of San Jose and a refugee Vietnamese immigrant. I live in District 4, and I'm a product of the East Side Union School District. Through hard work and dedication and my love for the San Jose community, I'm living a dream of being an entrepreneur and a business owner and not reporting to a corporate boss. I own and operate two restaurants in San Jose and have two other businesses headquarters in San Jose. My businesses provide over 60 jobs for the city. As a proud local restaurant owner, I'm pleased to be part of the fabric of our San Jose community. Not only do we provide a place for families and friends to share a meal, we provide jobs, pay taxes, and boost our local economy. We also local, support local charities, sports leagues, and other community organizations. Please don't chase more local restaurants out of town. You will not only hurt us, but you will hurt the whole community. We do not have unlimited funds and are trying to make a living ourselves. Thank you. Next speaker. How's it going? My name is uh, Kishan Kumar, and I own and operate eight restaurants in San Jose. I'm here to urge the council members to please vote no on the costly uh, restaurant ordinance. As a local restaurant owner, I value my employees and I try to do everything in my power to do right by them. But this costly restaurant ordinance goes too far. If this ordinance passes, I'll be forced to cut back employee hours or shut down our restaurants altogether, which hurts us all. And with the FAST Act coming up, it makes no sense for the San Jose City Council to pass this ordinance that would hurt local restaurant owners when the new statewide fast food council was created to address these exact issues. And when fast food workers are benefiting from the upcoming fast act with a $20, hour, a $20 per hour minimum wage. So please vote no on the uh, costly restaurant ordinance. Thanks. Thank you, next speaker. I'm also come on down Deepik Kumar, Sanjir Kumar and Lani, Lonnie Ballard. Good afternoon, thank you everybody. Um, I'm Dawn Coppen, I'm the CEO of the San Jose Public Library Foundation, and I'm here to thank you for your investment in the library these last five years. You can see the effort that you have put in and led for the 
education digital literacy programs that have literally helped hundreds of thousands of people every single year to enhance their education and their workforce opportunities it's critical at this time that you continue your support for these suite of programs as well as for the library's leadership in digital equity and empowerment together they both help the long-term improvements of our residents to be able to get out of homelessness to be able to secure better and and better paying wages it is essential that the library remains well funded so that it can remain one of the top programs in city departments as thank you next speaker Hi, my name is Daniela Valdivia, and I'm a San Jose native, and I'm here to talk in support of fast food workers. I can tell you from my own experience that working in the fast food industry is tough, but I can guarantee you that every single day a San Jose fast food worker is not taking their breaks, is getting retaliated against, and has no way or has no idea how to navigate this situation. M the majority of fast food workers do not know about their benefits such as sick pay, paid family leave, and a whole bunch of other benefits because they are being denied their right to know and understand their labor rights. I urge City Council to make the fast food work law part of the city's budget and priorities. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Good afternoon. My name is Brian Helm and I own two Vitality Bowls in San Jose. I started the restaurants after my son died of a food allergy. He was 18 year old, just graduated from high school and just celebrated 18th birthday. We, we went to a restaurant, didn't know there was peanuts there and he went anaphylactic and he died. So we opened these two restaurants in his memories to have a safe place for people with food allergies to eat and also to be able to give back to the community and we, we create, I treat my workers well, but the $20 is gonna cause me to lay off, shut down, and basically cut hours. And so I wanna vote no against this ordinance because it's hard enough to run it. I have my wife, my sons, my daughter-in-law, everybody working there so we can make it last. So hope you can vote no, thank you. Thank you, next speaker. Council people, how are you? Uh, my name is Jeev Kumar. I'm a franchisee here in uh, San Jose. Uh, I'm going to go no with this costly restaurant ordinance. Uh, I come from an immigrant family. My grandfather immigrated here, $40 in his pocket, brought his four kids, one of whom was my father. We have been working my whole life, and to finally create something where we are able to employ over 280 employees out of that 13,000. We do the best we can <clears throat> with rising cost of goods, rising cost of labor. Uh, it makes it tough to do business out here. But by adding this, it's only going to hurt us more. Um, we treat our employees good, follow every law that we can, and we hope that by doing these things, somehow the good that we do is reciprocated and you pass this it just won't so please vote no thank you next speaker good afternoon my name is Deepak Kumar and I'm a uh, restaurant operator in the San Jose area for the past 15 years um, I feel like we've touched multiple youths uh, lives and troubled individuals and kind of helped them find their way by giving them an opportunity to work with us and make something out of their lives. And I think the costly uh, business ordinance is going to kind of cut, cut back on certain things and cause us to have higher prices and maybe cut back on the opportunities and given jobs. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay, I'd also like to call down Anna Rivera, Miriam Batenko. Daisy Gomez and Jose Obregon. <coughs> Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, God, can I start? I, yeah, you Thank can you. Start. Uh, hello, my name is Robert Aguirre. Most of you know who I am. If not knowing me personally, you know what I stand for. So I want to stand up here and, and talk about all the things that are going on. 
I do want to say that I uh, support the memo written by uh, Candelas Ortiz and Jimenez, and I don't know if Torres signed on on it, but I appreciate him as well. But my question to all of you, and I know I'm not going to get an answer, is how many people lining up does it take in order for you to change your minds? We have people that are coming here and spending a great deal of their time, and I know you guys do too. But the point is that we're trying to get a, a message across, and we don't actually know how effective that is. So we think we need some feedback from all of you to let us know when we're actually able to influence your decisions, because otherwise there's no point in this. There's no point in, in providing a circus for people to come in here and parade themselves. Next speaker. Just gonna remind folks, please do not applaud or share between just so we can hear our speakers. Go ahead. Surge at Sacred Heart. A young man named Derek came to the Welcome Center at Sacred Heart Community Service and told them that he was thinking about suicide and wanted, to, wanted transport to a mental health urgent care. Sacred Heart can't transport folks, so the worker called 911 and asked for emergency services, emphasizing that Eric was calm, not an immediate danger to himself or others, and specifically said that we did not need police presence, just an ambulance. Instead of an ambulance, six armed officers showed up. One of the six officers began, began actively provoking Eric and trying to get a rise out of him. A Sacred Heart worker had to ask one of the older police officers to stop his coworker from escalating the situation. And luckily, he was willing and able Thank you. Next speaker. Felix Gomez, Ramses, Teo Nichols, and Adriana Puentes. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Miriam Betanco y soy organizadora de comida rápida aquí en el área de San José. Good afternoon, my name is Miriam Betalco and I'm a fast food organizer here in San Jose. Y a diario yo escucho a los trabajadores eh, de la falta de información, de la falta de su derecho, eh, de cómo sufren en sus trabajos, eh, cómo los discriminan, cómo les hacen robo de salario, cómo, y, no, y es por lo mismo, porque no saben de sus derechos. And a lot of times on the daily, I, I hear at work, that the workers uh, lack uh, information in regards to their rights, how they suffer at work, how they suffer uh, um, discrimination, as well as when they rob their wages because they do not know their rights. Es que cuando ya algunos que ya participan y, y, y hacen, quieren hacer su voz, los hacen represarias. Y no es justo que por reclamar sus derechos, estas personas estén sufriendo represalia. Es un poco de dignidad lo que están pidiendo. Es uh, saber sus derechos y tiempo pagado para pasar tiempo con su familia. No es algo fuera de, de los alcances. Um, and when um, people do try to participate and they try to raise their voices, then they get... Um, repercussions, and it's just not right that they take repercussions against the people that are trying to speak up. Uh, all they're asking for is a little bit of dignity to know their rights and pay time off so that they can spend time with their families. La industria de la comida rápida es la que menos beneficios tiene. Entonces, yo creo que eh, no se deben de olvidar de esa industria. Your time? The fast food industry is the industry that has the least amount of benefits, and I believe that you should not forget about the fast food industry. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Buenas tardes a cada uno de ustedes. Trabajo en McDonald's y Carlos Junior. 
Good afternoon to each one of you. I work in McDonald's and as well as Carl's Jr. Mi nombre es Daisy Gómez. Hace poco fui despedida de Carlos Jr. con el simple hecho de conocer mis derechos. Uh, my name is Desi Gomez, and not too long ago, I was fired from Carl's Jr.'s just because I knew my rights. Me hacían trabajar en mis descansos, me hacían trabajar más que los demás, y al pedir ayuda, se negaban a dármelo. They would make me work during my breaks, they made me work more than the rest of the others, and then when I would request help, they would deny it to me. Discriminación por simplemente no saber el idioma inglés. Cuando me despidieron, no me dieron la oportunidad de defenderme. Hasta ahora, no sé cuál es el motivo del despido. Discrimination simply because I do not know the English language. When I was fired, they did not give me the opportunity to defend myself. And as well, up to now, I still do not know the reason why I was fired. Espero que esto que me ha pasado a mí no le pase a otras personas. Por eso alzo mi voz. I hope that this that has happened to me will not happen to other people, and this is the reason why I raise my voice. Espero en Dios que nos escuchen y apoyen también que seamos entrenados con relación a nuestros derechos. También qué hacer cuando recibimos represalias de nuestros empleadores. Merecemos respetos. I hope to God that uh, our voices are heard and that you and we are supported as well as being trained in relation in in regards to our knowing our rights. Also, to that we not receive repercussions for by our employers because we, res we deserve respect. Your time is up. <coughs> um, next speaker, also Sarah Julian, Roma Dawson, Greg Miller, and Josefina Aguilar. Come on down, go ahead. Good afternoon, uh, members of the council. My name is Ramses Teo Nichols. I am with SEIU Local 1021, serving as vice president of politics. I am also a proud uh, resident of District 6, where I live in the union household. Uh, I'm here to support uh, hundreds of fast food workers who have been coming here over the last few months to ask that you support them in what they are showing us are solutions to the problems they're facing, right? And, and whether that's by way of the budget or an ordinance, I think the opportunity is in front of us to hear them out, like, we, like they've been telling us, what it needs to be done to improve their economic and job security. Uh, and I'll share that as a, a union worker coming from a nonprofit where we help people who are homeless, and I know that's the main theme of the budget, this is up there with affordable housing, right? Economic security is one of the reasons why people fall into homelessness. We're hearing from thousands here who are at risk of that, who are living paycheck to paycheck. The opportunity. Thank you. Next speaker. Good afternoon. My name is Sarah Julian. Um, I'm the recording secretary of Unite Here Local 19, the hospitality workers union. And as part of the labor movement and representing Unite Here, we urge the city council to vote in favor um, of creating this law by adding one-time funding to the city's budget to study developing a fast food fair worker ordinance. This is common sense to ensure workers know their rights and can have the tools to make their workplaces safe. We have all heard heartbreaking stories today from fast food workers and we need you as our local representatives to stand with the workers. We who are your constituents, who voted for you, who put our trust in you to protect us, this law pertains to companies with over 30 establishments. And so we call on you to do the right thing, to support workers. Thank you. Next speaker. My name is Greg Miller, and I'm uh, active with Cal uh, the uh, South Bay Community Land Trust. And I'm calling on you to not reduce Measure E funding for permanent affordable housing, um, using that money for specifically for housing 
we, we need to use that money specifically for housing preservation, which is the most cost-effective way to create permanent affordable ho housing and prevent homelessness. We need a balanced approach, help the homeless, but also use our funds to create new, uh, more affordable housing. Also, I call on you to, uh, for, to have basic respect for our neighbors who work hard for inadequate pay and unsafe conditions. Fast food workers should be educated in their language about their rights and should be able to take paid time off when they become ill. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. I'd also like to call down Marisol Romero, Maricela Fuentes, Jeremy Barus, and Deb St. Julian. Good afternoon, Josefina Aguilar. I'm the executive director of the South Bay Community Land Trust, the first and only community land trust in San Jose and Santa Clara County. I won't repeat all the wonderful statements that have already been made about uh, preserving the Measure E funding for the preservation of affordable housing. Uh, but I do want to remind you that this, the, or our organization and other ally organizations went to the state to challenge the adoption of the housing element because it stepped away from the commitment that was made originally to keep those Measure E funds for preservation. Then corrections were made and we saw the corrections and so we wrote a letter to the state and said, okay, we can live with these corrections. So to now divert funds is to step away again from those commitments in the housing element. So we're hoping that we don't have to go back to take up this fight because we will do it. It's not a threat, it's a promise because we really. Thank you, next speaker. Good afternoon, Mayor and City Council Members. My name is Maricela Fuentes and I'm here to represent the Si Se Puede Collective. Today I come before City Council to advocate for the prioritization of economic mobility strategies as part of the budget process, particularly for residents of East San Jose. Within the collective, we're dedicated to fostering economic empowerment through various initiatives. Just this month, we celebrated the graduation of our third cohort in the Jobs to Grow program, training 36 community members. This program co equips residents with skills and knowledge to start their own business in food service and childcare. Through initiatives like these, we create tangible opportunities for community members to provide for their families and contribute local economic growth. We commend the city of San Jose for selecting Mayfair and our Poco Way neighborhood as one of the demonstration sites for the Children and Youth Master Plan. This plan holds the promise of offering comprehensive support and guidance from cradle to grave, ensuring all San Jose youth. Thank you, next speaker. Good afternoon, Mayor and City Council members. My name is Marisol Romero and I represent the Si Se Puede Collective uh, based out of the Mayor for Community in Eastside San Jose. Today I'm here to echo the voices of countless families in our community who are grappling with the pressing issue of housing. Housing is the number one concern we hear from families and we are eagerly anticipating the passage of the local preference tenant policy in San Jose. However, for this policy to truly make a difference, we need to ensure ongoing support for the development of affordable housing. Affordable housing isn't just a quick fix, it's a long-term solution to the housing crisis facing our families. Funding for emergency interim housing is important as well, but cannot be the only strategy. We need to invest in long-term sustainable solutions like production and preservation of affordable housing. It provides stability and security, ensuring that everyone in our community has a place to call home. I urge the council to prioritize the development of affordable housing units. Let's not delay action that could help families in need. By investing in affordable housing, we can build a stronger, more inclusive community for all. Thank you, next speaker. I'm also Kim Guptel, Brandon Dawkins, Ms. Rayan Mendoza, and David Knoll. Come on down, thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council Jeremy Bruce, Director of Policy and Organizing with Amigos de Guadalupe, Center for Justice and Empowerment, and we're also part of the Si Se Puede Collective. As an organization that operates interim housing programs, we urge the Council to take a balanced approach to allocating Measure E funds to address the housing crisis. 
With that, we are particularly interested in the council to consider the first two provisions of the Ortiz, Candelas, and Jimenez memo. Funding for emergency interim housing is important as well, but cannot be the only strategy. At Amigos de Guadalupe, we have seen how transformative it is for families who are able to transfer from interim and into permanent housing. In addition, Amigos supports the creation of the Fast Food Fair Work Ordinance. We firmly believe that the ordinance can be a transformative force by guaranteeing workers know your rights trainings, safe and secure workplaces, and paid time off. San Jose has the opportunity. Thank you. Next speaker. Behind me are 600 signatures of San Joseans who signed a petition requesting that you, our representatives, act to match the right responder to mental health crises by funding an additional trust team for San Jose. 600, with, along with these 600 people, we support council members Candales, uh, Jimenez, I live in his district, yay, happy to be represented. And Ortiz says MBA request to expand trust and call on you, our representatives, and the representatives of these 600 folks to support this MBA request as well. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Good afternoon, Honorable Mayor and City Council. I'm Dave Noel, a longtime resident of District 9 and president of Erickson Neighborhood Association. I urge you to support Mayor Mahan's budget message, especially his proposals addressing homelessness, blight, and public safety. They will feed a virtuous cycle that will help us afford things tomorrow that we can't afford today. I read the entire message, and I'm generally very supportive of all the proposals and priorities contained in it. However, I'm hesitant on the park ballot measure due to insufficient information and I urge you to hold a study session on it before initiating any polling, even if that would delay the election. Regarding homelessness, we need to take bold action to do the greatest good for the greatest number of people as quickly as possible. Please be open to controversial ideas such as safe sleeping sites and reallocating some Measure E funds. Also, please expedite the emergency interim housing that's in the pipeline and taking much longer to build than initially promised. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hi, how are you? Good afternoon, Mayor, City Council. My name is Ms. Ray Mendoza. I'm the welcoming manager at Amigos de Guadalupe, Center for Justice and Empowerment. As an organization that provides intern housing for a community, we urge the council to take a uh, balanced approach to allocate Measure E funding uh, to provide inter housing to support our house community and preserve funding for future affordable housing at the same time. I know that's hard to do. But while investing in inter-housing, it's important that we need to ensure ongoing support for preservation and development of affordable housing to support our long-term families. Because of this, I urge you, please, uh, to support the first two provisions in the uh, uh, memo of Ortiz, Candelas, and Jimenez to continue address housing crisis through a balanced approach. Let's not delay the action that could help families in need. In addition, Amigos de Guadalupe supports the creation of the fast food worker ordinance through this important piece of legislation. Thank you. Next speaker, also Rav Ravi Patak, Suzanne Magno, Kathy Fuchs Oberstar, and Lilia Gaspar. Go ahead. Good evening, Mayor, City Council. Uh, my name is Brandon Dawkins. I am the Vice President of Organizing for SEIU Local 1021. There are 13,000 fast food workers here in the city of San Jose. 13,000 fast food workers who work day and day serving the community. 13,000 fast food workers that have gone through sexual harassment, wage theft, and other issues that are in the restaurants in the city of San Jose. What we've heard so far was talking points that the ordinance will be very expensive and it will be costly to the fact that these businesses will move out of San Jose. I beg to differ because what's wrong with workers knowing their rights? What's wrong with workers having paid time off so they can be educated on their rights on the job because they need to know their rights. They need to know how to protect themselves on their jobs. They need to understand when they are being taken advantage of. 
and with this ordinance that thank you next speaker Guys, I just I want to remind folks, please, let's continue so we can hear from everyone. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ravi Pathak, mayor, city mayor, and I'm city manager and vice mayor and city council members. I'm here to support uh, mayor's um, budget message. Uh, however, I'm sure you have done your diligence to make sure that we are safe here in San Jose. I've been here uh, since 96, and um, I've seen things change. And I'm sure you will take care of the affordable housing, um, do the diligence, whatever is needed. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Good afternoon, Mayor and City Council. My name is Kathy Fuchs Oberstar from the Baker West neighborhood in District 1. I am here to support the March budget message the mayor submitted in collaboration with the council members Omar Torres, David Cohen, Deb Davis, and Pam Foley. This message is a vision for this year's budget process. Despite the city's budget shortfall, it should help address the major issues impacting our residents. I strongly encourage the city council to adopt the mayor's March budget message in the entirety and urge the council to stay focused on ending street homeless, reducing crime, and cleaning up our city. The community is counting on you for the basic right so that we, our city, can strive in all the coming years. I fully support the mayor and his collaboration on this budget. I am especially proud of the regular communication that the mayor and his team provides to the city residents. Thank you. Next speaker. Hi, my name is Suzanne. I'm from District 3. Hello. <laughs> and I'm on an HOA board of my community, and I'm here to ask you to please approve Mayor Matt's budget, budget plan. As a board member and resident, I see the effects of homelessness every day in our community. We live near Orchard Park, which is along Coyote Creek. My main concern as a homeowner is that we will have to pay the penalty and increase taxes if we do not clean up these creeks. A $60,000 fine per toxin found in our waters per day. This is absurd. And that has come to this, and it would cost about $29 million plus if we find one toxin per day for a whole year. The creek by us was abated three to six months ago, but everyone came back. Many people have voiced their desire for funding for long-term housing, and I'm good with that, but... It's up to you. Thank you. Next speaker. Um, I'd also like to call down Sandra Asher, Heidi Kang, Philip Hines, and Peggy Elway. Good afternoon. My name is Kim Guptill, and I'm a D6 resident and a member of Showing Up at, for Racial Justice at Sacred Heart. I invite our council members and the mayor to imagine a city where trained professionals and peers respond to people having a mental health or substance abuse or substance use crisis. These San Joseans receive care. They don't die as they do and disproportionately people of color do when the cops show up. I think the cops agree. We keep hearing we don't have enough police in San Jose. The 911 call analysis makes it clear that we have plenty of police, and, but they're spending their time responding to situations that can and should be handled more, by, more appropriately by other responders. Take welfare checks. There's like 20,000 of them a year. If they got rid of those, imagine the time they'd have. This is just common sense. You don't have to give in to the fear mongering that's coming from the high. Thank you, next speaker. Good afternoon, Mayor and City Council. My name is Linda Gaspar. I'm a resident from D7. I'd like to express my strong support for the March bu budget message the mayor submitted in the collaboration with the council members of Omar Torres, 
David Cohen, Dave, Dev Davis, and Pam Foley. This collaboration produced a thoughtful and focused vision for the year budget process, which will help the city tackle the majority issues impacting our residents. Despite the budget shortfall, we encourage the city council to adapt, adopt the, major, the mayor's March budget message in its entirety. Urge to council to stay focused in ending the, sheet, the, the street homelessness, reducing crime, cleaning up our city, and speeding up permitting. Our community is counting on you to get the basics right so that we can all thrive in coming years. Thank you for representing my voice at the City Hall. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Ryan Grainer, say his name. His parents' worst nightmare came true last week when the black autistic teen was shot by police when responding to a mental health crisis. You have the power to change that in our community. I stand with Disability Rights California when they say that, quote, we need alternatives to law enforcement, including mobile crisis response teams that are staffed by mental health professionals and peers. Do you? I stand with the ACLU who told you, although the trust program is well designed, it cannot fulfill its promise until it is adequately funded and staffed. Do you? I stand against robbing Measure E funds and subverting the will of the voters. Do you? I stand with Council Members Ortiz, Jimenez, and Candelas. In particular, their calls to fund trust and protect Measure E. Thank you. Your time. Next speaker. Good afternoon, my name is Heidi King and I am a San Jose resident representing Surge showing up for racial justice today. Uh, I'm here to ask you to support the Condales, Jimenez, and Ortiz memo, which is asking for an MBA that estimate, estimates the cost of a third trust team based in East San Jose to build the necessary capacity for Eastern Santa Clara County. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. I'd also like to call down Derek from RECS and Lori Catcher. Go ahead, sir. Hi. Hello. I'm Phil Hines. Uh, I'm a local voter and member of Surge at Sacred Heart. Um, I'm here to say that I am in favor of the rights of fast food workers. I am here in the favor of fording, of uh, funding long-term affordable housing. But I'm also here to say this. Uh, I am here to urge the council to support, support the memo proposed by council members Jimenez, Candelas, and Ortiz to expand the funding to trust. From the 911 report published a few weeks ago, we are seeing that police are being involved in behavioral health issues in which they are not needed. It is clear that the solution is alternative programs like trust which can alleviate the demand and reliance on police to resolve mental health issues in which police are not required. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, next speaker. Um, I'm also gonna call down Jennifer Meyer, uh, Mary, Catherine Hedges, and Ruth Silvertaub. Go ahead. I'm Peggy Elwell from District 4. The way to end homelessness is to provide permanent, affordable housing. Those Measure E funds must be protected at all costs. I know of no other way to make lasting change. Seeing encampments of unhoused people may make people uncomfortable, but it's not just a question of getting people out of sight, but of having a stable solution for them and for all of the potentially homeless, rent-burdened people. I also support the ordinance to protect fast food workers and their ability to access their rights. I am also sure that many of them are in need of affordable housing, too. Thank you. Next speaker. Hello, council members and Mayor Matt Mahan. Uh, my name is Derek. I'm with Sacred Heart Community Service, Rex, SOS. 
uh, and I am in support of the memo put out by uh, Council Members Ortiz, Jimenez, and Candelas. Uh, I believe that this memo provides creative solutions to trying times. Workers are tenants. Many workers, including some who work for the city, are unhoused, and all of our communities deserve to feel safe and actually be safe when we uh, clock in, when we clock out, and to feel taken care of by our city leaders. Uh, we need to feel like we belong. The, uh, all of us, in one way or another, need uh, the right responder to call when we... Uh... Thank you, your time is up. Next speaker. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Lori Catcher. I'm a D6 resident. If someone you care about experiences a mental health or addiction crisis, what would your ideal response or help for that person be? Non-police crisis response is important to me as a mom of a teen who struggles with her mental health. As a volunteer and board member of Neighborhood Hands, working with my unhoused neighbors, and as a member of Surge. The trust program was developed by families who lost loved ones at the hand of police when calling for mental health help. We need the right responder for the need. This is public safety. And we already have the right responder for these types of crises, trust. I ask that you support the Candelas Jimenez Ortiz memo. Thank you for that memo. Follow through on the reimagining public safety recommendation and prioritize an additional trust field team for San Jose in this budget. Trust is public safety for all, as is keeping people in their home. Thank you. Your time is up. Next speaker. Hello, my name is Mary Idso. Um, I live in District 3, and I'm here with Serge. Um, I'm a retired physician, and I worked a long time with the chemical dependency program. So I've seen um, personally how harmful it can be for police to show up at a mental health crisis. So I really urge you to support an additional trust team that's trusted response, urgent support team um, in San Jose. Thanks. Thank you, next speaker. Um, also, I'd like to call down Sandra Munoz, Jennifer Cortez, and Bran Brando Duong. Go ahead. Okay. Um, um, my name is Ruth Silver Tobe. I'm here on behalf of the Wage Theft Coalition. I'm also special counsel to Step Forward Foundation. We co authored a report that you've all seen that shows that workers, uh, fast food workers, do not know their rights. Um, and I'm here to request that you include in the budget a study of the wage theft ordinance. We in San Jose are one of the few cities that does not have a paid sick leave that's at least eight days or 10 days. I don't understand why these corporations and wealthy fast food business owners and their lobbyists are afraid of fast food workers knowing their rights. Teaching workers their rights will not bankrupt small businesses. We hear this argument over and over and over whenever the minimum wage is raised. The cost of these ideas are small. The state's fast food council legally cannot address the issues workers are asking for today. The law. Thank you. Next speaker. Uh, good afternoon, Council. My name is Catherine Hedges. I live here in District 3, a member of Surge. A national survey of sheriffs and police found that 21% of total law enforcement staff time was used to respond to calls and transport individuals with mental illness in 2017. This is consistent with what we just learned in the 911 event report. Sending the right responder saves money and settlement costs. Data on co response shows that they're more costly and less effective than teams like Trust. Trust goes out on hundreds of calls a month, and that's like 100 times more than the, I forget the acronym. 
uh, and trust works. The city should support the MBA from Candelas, Aminas, and Ortiz to follow through on the rep's recommendations. I also support the fast food workers and affordable housing. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hi, my name is Jen Meyer. I live and work downtown. I'm a member of Surge. My uncle and my cousin both committed suicide. And I have many other loved ones who have struggled with mental illness, addiction, and suicidal ideation. It is absurd on its face that the only crisis response option we have had for our loved ones is armed officers. We finally have a program that treats those of us in mental distress the way we would all want to be treated, with dignity and compassion. The trust program, you have the power to expand appropriate response here in San Jose for all of us. Support the MBA request submitted by Candelas, Jimenez, and Ortiz to expand trust here in San Jose. It's the most frequently utilized program of all the response options. San Jose gets four times as many calls as the other regions, and your own city data says Mental health situations are not criminal situations. There are literally thousands of calls that could be sent to more appropriate responders. Thanks. Thank you. Next speaker. I'm also going to call down Sandy Perry, Gloria with Housing and Fast Food Workers, and Etra et et Wilson, Elva Wilson. Uh, buenas tardes, mi nombre es Sandra Muñoz y um, vivo en San José desde hace más de 20 años según mi experiencia trabajando y hablando con mis amistades y amigos. Good afternoon, my name is Sandra Muñoz and I've been living in San Jose for more than 20 years and according to my experience working and talking with my friends, creo que la industria de comida rápida en San José desempeña un papel crucial al servir comidas a decenas de miles de personas e impulsar la ganancia del sector de comida rápida. I believe that uh, the fast food industry in San Jose has a very crucial, um, lay, uh, very crucial work uh, while serving food to dozens of thousands of people and, um, and creating um, profits for a uh, fast food sector of millions of dollars. Sin embargo, los trabajadores de primera línea de la comida rápida, que son desproporcionadamente mujeres y personas de color, se enfrentan a condiciones laborales inseguras. However, the, worker, the first line workers of fast food, um, who are disproportionately women and people of color, are facing conditions uh, that are insecure. La ley del trabajo justo en la comida rápida presenta una oportunidad para revolucionar esta industria al brindar capacitación sobre conozca sus derechos y tiempo libre remunerado. The fast food uh, workers for ordinance represents an opportunity to um, revolutionize this industry in providing uh, training for people to know their rights and the free time that they deserve for parents and uh, care workers and individuals with, with needs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Good afternoon. My name is Jennifer Cortez, and I am here today as a lifelong San Jose community member. I am here asking you to please vote in favor of creating the fast food fair work law by adding one-time funding to the city's budget to study developing a fast food fair work ordinance. Our fast food worker population, eight of 10, which are people of color, and seven of 10, which are women, are susceptible to labor violations like wage theft, sexual harassment, discrimination, all while dealing with unstable jobs and lack of paid time off. We need to start viewing fast food workers as what they are, mothers, fathers, head of households, students, people like you and me. Annual Know Your Rights trainings and the ability to accumulate paid time off would be the first step towards acknowledging that there are people under our favorite fast food chains uniforms. Not only would this set San Jose apart as one of the leading cities in this revolutionizing movement where fast food workers are being recognized as worthy of the same rights and benefits. Thank you, next speaker.
Good afternoon, Mayor and Council Members. I'm Sandy Perry with South Bay Community Land Trust. We're here today to call on the City Council to elevate providing affordable housing to be one of the four key focus areas in the budget as advocated by the residents of San Jose in the city's own survey and especially uh, by the low income and people of color communities. We cannot afford to violate our housing element that we only uh, submitted and got adopted uh, just a few months ago. And we cannot rely on the market to build affordable housing because private developers will not build unless rents go up. Affordable housing requires political leaders with the conscience and the vision to advocate and allocate the resources necessary to make that happen. And I hope and I'm claiming that that is you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker. I'd also like to call down Tom Wilson, Dilza Gonzalez, Andrea Patillo, and Carol Wynn. Good afternoon. My name is Elva Wilson. I have been a resident of Council District 5 for over 33 years and a resident of East San Jose for over 65 years. I am here today supporting the mayor's budget me message in its entirety because I'm concerned with the excessive taxpayer cost and ineffective efforts the city has put into addressing our growing homeless crises. We have been trying to shelter thousands of homeless people with a Cadillac solution on a Kia budget. Tiny homes are an extremely expensive solution that this city cannot afford, especially the projected budget shortfall. Taxpayers are no longer willing, nor should we be expected, to pay to build individual homes for every person that becomes homeless in our city especially for those of us on a government pension. For those reasons, I strongly support the mayor's financial budget. Thank you. Next speaker. Hi, my name's Tom Wilson. I'm here to voice my support for Mayor Mahan's 2024-25 budget recommendations. In light of the projected five-year, $80 million shortfall, I support the mayor's determination to efficiently address the city residents' priorities, homelessness, housing, and crime. The mayor's recommendations clearly detail innovative strategies for preventing and resolving homelessness at an affordable price. Adopting the successful policies of other cities like Reno and San Diego's safe sleeping sites is very compelling from a taxpayer's perspective as emergency housing should be inexpensive and temporary. Also, piggybacking on the City of Mountain View's cost-effective safe parking program will ensure lower cost as well. Council members, please join me in supporting Mayor Mahan's goals and objectives for your time. Thank you. Next speaker. Hello, Mayor and Council Members. My name is Elsa Gonzalez. I am a resident of District 4 and the Organizing Policy Manager with Sumos Mayfair. I am here because I am concerned about the proposal to once again shift Measure E funding away from affordable housing. Instead of pitting one need against the other, let's come up with a balanced plan and that advances both strategies. We appreciate the Council's interest in adding more shelters options in our city, but in our focus for expanding shelters alone will not yield the results. As a person that has experienced homelessness, I know that we don't need more shelters. We need affordable housing where our families can feel safe and our kids can call home. Thank you. Have a really good evening. Thank you. Next speaker, also Kathy Tran, Krista De La Torre, Vasundhara, and James Lee. Go ahead. 
Hello, my name is Andrea Portillo with Somos Mayfair and the CISA Puede Collective. We are deeply concerned about the proposal to once again shift the already limited resources in Measure E away from affordable housing production and preservation. We know we need comprehensive strategies and solutions to address the housing crisis. Yes, this includes continued support for our most impacted community members, but it cannot be the only strategy. We appreciate the council's support for a tenant preference policy aimed at eliminating barriers to access affordable housing and keep families in the communities they call home. The tenant preference policy will not have the level of impact that it can have if we are not also investing in building more affordable housing and preserving existing housing. These strategies are homelessness prevention strategies. We need long-term sustainable solutions. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. Hello, Mayor and Council. My name is Kathy Tran. I live in District 3 and I'm with IFPTE Local 21. We represent city workers here at San Jose who are proud to provide public services. I'm here to urge support for the Mayor and Council to adopt the Ortiz, Candelas, and Jimenez memo. We're concerned that the Mayor's March message is prevent presenting a false choice of city services versus homelessness, and we're concerned at the rhetoric regarding the shortfall is due to our employee contracts. We shouldn't blame workers when the city is failing to recruit and retain workers to provide services and our bargaining campaign was an opportunity to help the city with becoming an employer of choice. We need more clarity on these short-term solutions for homelessness that don't include building long-term affordable housing. Additionally, we're here in so solidarity with fast food workers. Budgets are a statement of our values and San Jose should value protecting our most vulnerable workers. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. Good afternoon, my name is Krista Delatori and I am a representative with IFPT Local 21. We represent nearly 1,000 city employees here at the city of San Jose, from librarians to housing development officers to wastewater engineers. Um, our members help ensure our city can deliver quality, timely services to our San Jose residents, rain or shine. Today we ask that you support the Ortiz, Candelas, and Jimenez memo. Um, the mayor is currently peddling a very dangerous rhetoric by falsely tying city deficits to the equitable salary and benefit adjustments that city workers received last year. Adjustments that were desperately needed to fill our hundreds upon hundreds of vacancies. Um, the impact of contract negotiations is extremely minimal compared to the short-term programs that the mayor wants to commit the city to. Do not attack the very employees that make your programs possible and help the city function effectively. The city needs to do its due diligence and explore the long-term impacts of radical cuts to city services to invest in unproven short-term solutions around housing. We also stand today with our brothers and sisters here with SEIU. Thank you. Next speaker. I'd also like to call down Tui Fuang Nguyen and Sam Ho. <clears throat> Go ahead. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is James and I'm here as a community member of San Jose, born and raised. Uh, I'm here to urge the city council to vote in favor of the fast food fair work ordinance. As a person who loves to eat fast food and will continue to do so, I know that th th these places are staffed by people and not robots. Uh, the people who serve us food don't deserve to be abused by poor management. And we as a society have passed labor laws to protect its workers, and it isn't fair for fast food workers to be taken advantage of just because they don't know their own rights. I ask the city council to help its workers fight for the rights that they already have. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you, next speaker. respected mayor and the city council. For many people, interim housing will just give enough time to get back to their feet. We need emergency housing to end street homelessness and to clear our waterways. And we shouldn't lose the focus on ending street homelessness, reducing crime, speeding up permitting, and finally getting us to the basics budget. I also support pedestrian safety in my neighborhood and I recommend having speed safety cameras near schools by the Vision Zero Action Plan to bring more safety to the pedestrians. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. 
Good afternoon. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak here, and thank you uh, for the mayor's memo uh, on the budget. Also, the memo from some of the council members and the specifics there. I support generally uh, all that's been presented there. And uh, I think that it's important for us to remember that 10 years ago, we passed Measure A uh, about almost 10 years ago. And today, we talk about the same topic, the same passion. And yet, we have more people homeless on, in our city and more people homeless in our county. We haven't resolved that issue. And I'm hoping that with your wisdom and your efforts, energy, please come together and hopefully we can be innovative and not deal with the reac reaction to homelessness, affordable housing, safety, uh, light, and jobs and housing, so forth. Uh, those are reaction, reactive efforts that we're taking. Hopefully we can focus on the proactive and how we get rid of that situation. Thank you, next speaker. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and call more names. I have Stephen Berry, W. Jean Hunt, Viviana, Josh Silo, Babita Kumari, Good afternoon, Mayor, City Council members. My name is Gene Hunt, and I, like you, have been here since about 2 o'clock. And during this whole time, I've only heard one person mention the idea that there is going to be a penalty that the city of San Jose has to pay if we don't handle the homelessness situation along our creeks. The mayor's budget message includes funds that will actually help handle that. So I encourage you all to vote for that measure. It is the thing that we need right now. Long-term housing is definitely something we have to put attention on, but short-term is what we need to address right now. Otherwise, the city is gonna pay more and all of us will suffer even further cuts in services. So please vote yes on his message. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. Good afternoon, my name is Josh Sello and I'm the CEO of Bill Wilson Center. Thank you, Mayor, Vice Mayor, City Council members for your ongoing commitment to ending homelessness in San Jose. But we need to remember, shelters do not end homelessness. Temporary housing does not end homelessness. Emergency interim or transitional housing does not end homelessness. The thing that ends homelessness is permanent affordable housing. I know it's tough, but we need a yes and solution. There will be costs no matter what we do. There always are. But we have to stop kicking the can down the road and say we're going to solve this problem in the future. We never will. And 15 years from now, we'll be having the same conversation. Just all of us will look a lot older. We need to commit to end homelessness. And we must preserve our Measure E dollars in order to do that and invest in permanent affordable housing. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, also Richard Wong, Stephen from USTEC. Hello, everyone. This Wait, hold on, hold on. Let me just call a few more names. Okay. <laughs> um, Stephen from um, USTEC, Amy Cody, and Mitzi Method. Go ahead. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. you. Hi, this is Babita Kumari, the Director of Housing Program at Bill Wilson Center. As we are all aware, the issues of homelessness are acute, and providing permanent housing for individuals is crucial. Beyond shelter, it's about stability, dignity, and well-being. Providing a stable housing gives individuals and families a foundation to rebuild their lives. This stability is crucial for accessing health care, maintaining employment, and pursuing education. Moreover, permanent housing fosters a sense of belonging and encourages social connection, enabling community integration. Investing in permanent housing solutions and supportive services will break the cycle of homelessness. It will promote human dignity, empower, contribute to economic growth, and create a more inclusive and resilient community. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. Good 
Good afternoon, Mayor um, and the council members. My name is Richard Wong. I'm a former commissioner for District 3. Um, me and my partner are the earlier, are the earlier pioneers of Smart City. Uh, Smart City is a nonprofit. Smart City USA, CA USA is a nonprofit, uh, 501c3 that has uh, innovative approaches to mitigate today social, economic, and political uh, imbalances. We are here. We are here today to inspire our citizen and community to bring about better living situations. The smart city concept is simply about collaborations and positive initiatives. Currently, Smart City CA USA is in uh, collaboration with the Department of Energy uh, to catalyze rapid clean economy while... Uh, Thank you, next speaker. Hello, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council Members. One of the most important things I think I can say is thank you very much for your service. You have very, very difficult jobs. You make very, very difficult choices, and I thank you. I want to thank you publicly. Also, I want to say that service is really, really important to all of us, and I want to support the Mayor's budget because I know that this Mayor takes a very lot of time and a lot of care in making these decisions and they're very, very difficult. And so, I thank you again. I'd also like to be of service. I'd like to say that there is an opportunity for us to partner with the Department of Energy and US Tech, my little nonprofit that's geared towards teaching people to do high tech. And I would like to uh, work with each and every one of you and I will be contacting you to uh, partner and we can get some money from the Department of Energy and bring it to the city. Thank you, next speaker. Um, also come on down, Alex with SJDA, Gabby Chavez Lopez, Emily Herndon, and Cassandra Magana. Go ahead. Good afternoon, my name is Amy and I'm here to support the March budget message focused on ending street homelessness, reducing crime, and cleaning up our city. We need to address homelessness with greater urgency and equity. While we build affordable housing, we cannot leave the vast majority of our unhoused residents to languish for years without a safe and clean living environment. My community suffers from retail theft, car break-ins, porch piracy, and sideshows. We need speed cameras and more police officers to respond to emergencies, work with communities, patrol, and deter crime. I appreciate the mayor's informative emails, town hall meetings, neighborhood association support, fall neighborhoods conference, and volunteer cleanup events around our city. I ask for continued support to keep residents informed and engaged. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. Hello, Mayor, Council. Um, my name is Mitch Method. I am a lifelong San Jose resident, um, educator on the east side, and I'm here to support Mayor's, Mayor Mahan's um, budget and his plan to address the homeless issue. Um, it's, I understand that we need long-term housing, um, low-income housing or affordable housing, but what we really need to do right now is to address the problem of the unhoused. It's, if you've been down there into the encampments on a bike ride along Guadalupe Creek, um, we need to get people into places that are safe. The encampments are not safe, they're not sanitary. They're, they're not where anybody should be. So we need to address that first. And then I think we always need to work on the affordable housing, but I hope you support his message and give the mayor a chance, council, to do what he needs to do to get this thing going. Thanks. Thank you, next speaker. Also come on down, Tristia Bauman, Carl Lee, and Andrew Siegler. Go ahead. Good evening, Mayor and City Council members. My name is Cassandra Magaña. I'm the Assistant Manager of Public Policy at West Valley Community Services and in partnership with the Real Coalition. 
I am also someone with lived experience in homelessness. At West Valley Community Services, our dedicated team works tirelessly to empower individuals and families in need. I'm here to emphasize the critical importance of treating our limited funds for permanent housing as precious resources. As an organization deeply entrenched in the frontline efforts to combat homelessness, we understand the urgency of investing in sustainable solutions. Diverting funds away from initiatives aimed to, at addressing the root causes of homelessness is simply not an option. We must uphold the commitment made to the community and ensure that Measure E funds are protected and utilized effectively to invest in permanent housing solutions. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hi, my name is Emily Hendon. I live in uh, District 6 and I'm a member of Showing Up for Racial Justice. And in my close to 12 years of service at the city of San Jose, I managed health and wellness benefits. So I'm very familiar with the need um, for um, important and access that's a, uh, to mental health benefits that are appropriate and compassionate for people in need. So like our employees, this is something I think all of the city of San Jose citizenry deserve. And I know that, um, you know, in, Defaulting to police is not a good solution. If I had a member of my family having a mental health crisis, I would not want someone showing up with a gun and a uniform. So if you've heard from the other speakers, our current program support is not enough for all the current needs across San Jose. So increasing this availability of trust teams will help our community and especially those members experiencing mental health um, crisis. So I urge you all to support this memo that was um, penned by council members Ortiz Candela. Thank you. Next speaker. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. My name is Andrew Siegler, and I'm with uh, Surge at Sacred Heart, and I'm a District 3 voter. Um, I want to thank Council Members Candelas, Jimenez, and Ortiz for their memo, and I support it. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a humdinger especially the, the instructions to look into funding another trust team um, in San Jose. In light of the recent report on 911 events, um, tens of thousands of calls could be, uh, my eyes are gone. tens of thousands of calls can be whisked away to uh, alternative response. This is a matter of public safety. I'm also in support of the Measure E staying for permanent affordable housing and also for fast food workers to get updated on their rights. Um, what I don't understand about the mayor's budget message is why we're going after 100 backfill police officers uh, when we didn't do it last year. Go for a smaller target, like 10. Thank you. I'd also like to call down David Heindel, Sandra Weber, Woody DeMeo, and Min Tan Tran. Hello, my name is Tristia Bauman. I'm the Directing Attorney of Housing at the Law Foundation of Silicon Valley, as well as a Real Coalition member. We've heard talk about changing the status quo, but it's important that we understand targeted encampment sweeps with nothing but the possibility of a temporary alternative is the status quo. The mayor's budget message is not a new vision for a community struggling with hundreds of evictions filed every month and more people entering into homelessness each year than are housed. Instead, it is a repackaged punitive strategy that has failed for years in city after city to achieve the goals we all share, the goals to end homelessness and preserve our public spaces. The failure of sweeps into shelter policies is well documented. The latest proof comes from a recent study of LA's similar plan, which was found to be, in the words of one LA council member, a complete and total failure. It didn't reduce the number of people living outside, but it did waste a lot of money and time. San Jose can do better, but not if we repeat the same mistakes that other cities have made. Thank you. Next speaker. Mayor and uh, council members, the housing affordability and availability issue is obviously interconnected with homelessness. And it's also one of the biggest issues we have in this country right now. I wanna thank the uh, council member Cohen, Foley, Davis, and Torres 
um, and Mayor Mayhan for collaborating on the budget message. I think that gives us the best path forward. Um, I see the proposal, the message, as a multi-year approach to solving that problem with rationalism, and I also believe all of you brought very different perspective and solutions to this answer. Um, in addition, I think in the, the other thing I want to highlight in the proposal is uh, streamlining and speeding up the uh, permitting process. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Uh, good afternoon, council members who are still here. Uh, in this time, uh, my name is David Heindel. I live in District 10. In this time of declining funds, I often reflect on Governor Brown's comment, infinite wants and infinite needs. That's the problem that you have to deal with here, especially given the most difficult task of balancing it with less money than you had the year before. Uh, I believe the mayor's budget message as written in collaboration with council members Torres, Cohen, Davis, and Foley is a balanced solution in these difficult times. And as I read it, uh, the council member Ortiz, Candelas, and Jimenez memo addresses a couple of specific, specific items, but does not uh, deal with the entirety of the challenges that city manager who is not here is about to embark on. I therefore urge you to support the mayor's budget message as written in its entirety without. Thank you. Next speaker. Mayor and uh, city council, my name is Sandra Weber, and I'm a resident of D6. Uh, Mayor, your town hall the other day on homelessness was surgical, practical, and visionary. San Jose has a, man, a mandate to, by the state to clear encampments along its waterways. These at-risk folk living in San Jose need a safe space to reset, and quick build communities provide a solution to this emergency. We encourage the city council to adopt the mayor's March budget message in its entirety and urge the council to stay focused on ending street homelessness, reducing crime, cleaning up our city, and speeding up the permitting process. Thanks to council members Torres, Cohen, Davis, and Foley for working collaboratively with the mayor to put together this year's March budget message. Thank you. Next speaker. I'd also like to call down, before you speak, Sherat Lynn, um, Duke Cabela, Cab Sabel I can't pronounce it, Sabalos, sorry, um, Pancho Guevara, and W. Jean Hunt. Go ahead. Good afternoon, Mayor, Castles, members, and everyone. My name is Min Tran. I live uh, in District uh, 7, uh, corner of uh, Story Road, and uh, work on uh, Tory Road. I, uh, I'm here to support the mayor um, budget message, and I urge all of you do whatever you can to uh, approve the budget. And uh, I urge that uh, keep our waterway clean and safe. I'm a fisherman also, and I, whenever I eat the fish, I think about how dirty our creek, our area where the homeless people just you know put all the trash in the uh, in the creek. And I, I, I support, I strongly support the uh, the budget uh, in March. And uh, thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Next speaker. Hello, my name is Dulce. I'm 22, and I'm a community member. And so this, so statistically, I am more likely to be houseless than rent my own place. It's hard to focus on school, a career, when I'm too busy working to pay to have a roof over my head. Measure E funds should be used for affordable housing and prevent homelessness. The council had an opportunity this year to help prevent homelessness with COPA, but tanked it. Maybe that should be brought, brought back. In addition, I support, and you should too, the fast food worker rights. People who work tirelessly should be able to afford literally just a livable life, and they should be aware of what their rights are and use them. 13,000 workers in the city that need to be protected. Stop putting franchise owners and profit over the lives of people. Stop this modern day slavery. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. 
Good afternoon, Mayor and members of the council. My name is Poncho Guevara, and I have the honor of working at Sacred Heart Community Service. And uh, and I just wanted to, uh, and I also uh, co-convene the Real Coalition. So uh, to reinforce some things that you already heard is like providing a permanent affordable home is the only solution to homelessness, and keeping people in their homes is the only way to prevent homelessness. So the need for us to be able to make sure that we're putting these investments that we've actually secured uh, because, of, uh, because of the efforts of organizations like ours. Four years ago, we walked, called, messaged um, uh, thousands and thousands of voters to pass Measure E. And we want to partner with you again to try to make sure we create additional funding streams to look for permanent solutions to homelessness and, and be able to provide these resources. That needs to be critical and at the forefront of our imaginations. I also want to speak as the, as the author of the Reimagining Report, and we really need to invest in alternative systems, such as the trust program. We talked about it, we presented this report to you for, uh, year, three years ago, two and a half years ago, we need to invest in it now. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. I'd also like to call Anna Marie Russo, Sigurd Jacobson, and Nora Larson. Uh, my name is Sharat Lin, uh, I'm with Human Agenda. And I just want to touch on three things very quickly. So first of all, Measure E funds should go for, for long-term you know, permanent solutions for housing. Let's deal with the, firm, the housing crisis and, and uh, the, the homelessness crisis. Uh, the, the fast food workers need to be protected. A lot of them are undocumented, so, so they're, they're been, they have always been left out of a lot of the, a lot of the protections that have applied to other workers generally, so we need to, to prioritize that. Um, and, 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 the, and the trust program, I urge you to fully fund the trust program and, and instead of funding police, the, we can actually save money in a time of a budget crunch by, by having police focus on crime and let the trust program take care of mental illness. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Good evening, everyone. I'm Anna Maria Russo, and I'm not just a district member. I'm a city. Of, I'm a member of the city of San Jose, and proud of it. I'd like to express my strong support of mayor's the mayor's budget. Please, please, please approve it. This this collaboration produced a thoughtful, focused vision for this year's budget process, which will help the city tackle major issues impacting our residents. And I am a resident, and I have been my whole life, and I'm very old. Despite, <laughs> so let's get that shortfall under control, and let's support the mayor. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker, and also Nicole Boas, come on down. Hi, my name is Sigrid Jacobson. I'm a member of Showing Up for Racial Justice. I believe you all try to treat others the way that you want to be treated, and the trust program treats those of us with mental health or substance abuse crises the way we would want to be treated, with dignity and compassion. So I'm here to ask that you support the Candelas Jimenez Ortiz memo to fund a third trust team in San Jose. The report that you received two weeks ago makes clear that behavioral health is a large category of police interactions and these could be diverted to more appropriate responders. And we have those responders in the trust program. Please follow through on the reimagining public safety recommendation and prioritize funding for the additional trust field team in this next budget. Trust is public safety for all of us, as is keeping people in their homes through permanent affordable housing and as in measure E. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. My name is Nora Larson. I live in District 3, and I'm a member of Showing Up for Racial Justice at Sacred Heart. I'm a teacher, and I have plenty of loved ones, students, friends, and family members who have struggled with mental illness and addiction. Because of this, I'm grateful that we have non-police crisis response programs like Trust. If I ever needed to call for uh, for one of my loved ones, I would absolutely want a mental health professional a peer supporter and a first aid responder to be the people on the line and come in person if needed. These are the right responders, the people best equipped to provide care. These are the people I would trust with my loved one's lives. Tragically, as you know, before trust existed, members of our community called for care for their loved ones 
and instead of providing care, armed police killed their family members. In October, the Mercury News released an investigative report that found that 70%... Thank you. Your time. Next speaker. Your time is up. Okay, I, I've called all cards. Okay. And I don't see anybody else coming forward, so back to okay, council. Okay, thank you, Tony. I, okay. Okay, thank you, Tony. Just want to make sure we didn't miss anybody. Um, thank you all for taking the time to be here and sharing your opinions. I think that was about three hours of public comment, which um, is very impressive. Um, Everybody's experiences, whatever side of an issue you might be on, are certainly valid, and I think we really benefit from hearing the breadth of experiences and opinions that we heard here tonight. So I just want to thank you all for taking the time to be here. Uh, just very briefly in Spanish, uh, muchas gracias a todos por tomarse el tiempo de estar aquí hoy. Su voz es importante y preciamos escuchar sus experiencias y los desafíos que enfrenta en sus trabajos. Gracias por su tiempo y participación esta noche. Uh, I also, I also want to thank my team and, and the city manager and her team for helping us bring forward this budget message. Uh, Stephen Keynes in my office, my budget director, who's ably assisted by Keith Hertzberg and Mackenzie Mossy and the rest of our policy team, did a tremendous amount of work over the last few months to bring forward this message. And that was really only possible because of the uh, collaboration we had from uh, the city manager, Jennifer McGuire, assistant city manager, Lee Wilcox, uh, the city's budget director, Jim Shannon, and um, the different departments and uh, members of the administration who helped us understand their needs and the trade-offs and learnings as we go year to year. So this was, um, supported by a lot of, um, this process was supported by a lot of input from, from various folks. And then once again, as I said at the beginning, I just want to thank my colleagues who were in the Budget Brown Act who gave really thoughtful feedback along the way. And that again includes Council Member Cohen, Council Member Foley, Council Member Davis, Council Member Torres. I'm not going to say too much more. I, I do want to offer a couple of quick reflections based on all the public comment and then we'll get into Council deliberation. I, I do want to make very clear on affordable housing that San Jose is going to continue to invest in affordable housing. In fact, we just recently issued a notice of new funding for 50 million new dollars that we're putting into affordable housing. We're also applying to the state for tens of millions of dollars in HAP funding for more affordable housing. Um, and and we're, gonna, we're gonna continue to invest. I think what is challenging at the moment, and we're gonna have to navigate as a council, is continuing to have an all of the above approach in which we invest in affordable housing as well as many other needs, including prevention and interim housing and safe parking at a time when overall revenues are slowing down, revenue growth is slowing down, and Measure E in particular has actually declined quite a bit from over 100 million a couple of years ago to under 50 million today. So that is a difficult moment to be in. Of course, these things are cyclical. Measure E revenues will go up again, and that'll be wonderful. We'll have more dollars to expend across all of those strategies. And I'm confident that city revenues will grow at a faster rate at some point. But this year and next year are, are looking to be tough. And so it's, the, the trade-offs won't be easy. But I do want folks to know that no one is intentionally trying to pit people against one another. I, I'm confident that this council, listening to all of you and working with the city manager and her team, are gonna make trade-offs that allow us to continue to take an all of the above approach, but also recognize the urgent crisis of thousands of people literally living and dying on our streets, and the fact that we have obligations under the Clean Water Act that we do have to be responsive to. So it's not an easy task, and I, I don't want that to sound like kicking the can, but I want you to know that I'm committed to an all of the above approach. And while we won't be able to do it at the same rate as we have in recent years, at least this year and next, we will continue to deploy your funds, taxpayer dollars, into building new affordable housing in addition to all of the other strategies that we're balancing here of prevention and emergency shelter and the many other needs beyond housing and homelessness that we have as a city. So I just, I wanted to clarify that so no one was left 
with the wrong impression. Um, also just note for the record that Measure E talks about in the ballot language both affordable housing and sheltering the homeless. So I do want people to just have that context. Um, and then on the, uh, on the trust team, appreciate the advocacy. And I know we have some recent council direction to collaborate with the county. There's also direction in the measure. And I support my colleague's uh, memo that points to wanting to continue to look at the cost of that service in collaborating with the county to better serve or create alternative response models in collaboration with the county. Very much agree with, with going in that direction. Um, so uh, appreciate all the comments. Again, I'm gonna, I, I know virtually all of my colleagues have hands up, so I'm eager to have them weigh in. I'm gonna turn first to Council Member Davis. Thank you, and I wanna thank everyone who came out to speak um, for public comment today as is your right in our representative democracy. So thank you for exercising your right today. Um, I, I appreciate you all sharing your stories and your lives with us. And I, I just wanna say that my heart goes out to those of you who shared stories today, who, who have suffered illness and other trials. Um, I, I, can, I can relate to some of those things. Regarding the fast food issue, um, I know you all know that there is a new state law that goes into effect on April 1st. And, and so I just want to address that I think before we do anything as a city in this area, I think we need to see how that law is implemented and how the industry changes as a result. And that's going to take time. So I don't want you to think that our, um, our lack of action, direct action on this, on this issue today means that this issue is, is not going to be covered because it is. But in the meantime, I did wanna also make sure that everyone knows that Santa Clara County has a retail food worker survey that they have partnered with the University of uh, California, Berkeley, um, their labor occupational health program to, con to conduct a survey to document the issues facing retail food workers. And I hope that you will all go to the Santa Clara County website and fill out that survey because I think that will be good information for us as well as for the county. So please do um, partake in that survey. Regarding the budget itself, this budget presents uh, the most challenges that we faced in San Jose in over a decade. And um, that together with the rejection of our storm stormwater permit and our projected budget deficits for this year and the next few years um, really presents a lot of challenges for us and and frankly it puts the the city managers one team ethos um, to the test it will be to put to the test for staff um, not just prns housing and public works will have to uh, take a piece of the homelessness issue as they have been and work together but also our uh, environmental services department our department of transportation and pbce as well as Frankly, I think all other departments will need to work together to tackle this homelessness issue. And so something has changed over last year for all of those who came to talk about Measure E. The rejection of the stormwater permit really requires us to intensify our focus on homelessness and frankly, unfortunately, interim solutions to get people out of the creeks. And that will come at a cost, obviously. Um, I expect staff will be clear with us in the coming months about what work will need to be delayed as a result of this increase um, of focus and intensity of focus on homelessness. Um, I want to get to, I'm going to get to a motion and it will include the Mayor's March budget message and most of um, Council Members Jimenez, Ortiz and Candelas's memo, but I do want to address something else, and this goes along with the one team issue. Um, number nine of that, of that memo, I, I really have to say a couple of things about it. First of all, this recommendation is not appropriate to assign to the city manager. And I think it's really important that we, as a council, frankly, refrain from any pot shots at each other um, and and I at the same time I know where this came from I think it's indicative of the state of the relationships on this council um, 
some with each other and, and also with the mayor, and it's, it's not good. And I wouldn't normally drag this out on the dais, um, but unfortunately we don't have the opportunity to have these discussions when, um, when something is put in a memo. We can't have discussions back there in the green room about stuff like this. So uh, I just wanna say we, we have even tougher discussions coming forward with us um, this year and, and in June, it's gonna be even more difficult than today is gonna be. And I really hope that, that everyone on this council thinks very, thinks very seriously about how we can work well together and what each of your roles is, and I'm including myself, each of our roles is in, in working better together. Um, so that's all I'm gonna say about that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the motion now, and, and I am gonna be very specific about, uh, well, I have one other thing. There was a, um, a part of the March budget message in page five that talks about, um, you know, obviously we're gonna have to pay for our, uh, pay for our deficits in some way. And one of the, issue, one of the items was uh, listed as number three, reducing or eliminating current services, including the consideration of budget reductions for mayor and city council offices. I think number nine from, from the uh, Jimenez Ortiz Candelas memo may have come from a frustration from that, although it wasn't directly related to that in the, in the memo. And I know that there are a couple of us, myself included, who are leaving office and that um, payouts as our, our teams, our staff members leave is a particular hardship on our last year's budget. And that that can cause issues in our last year in office and that if we are, um, if our budgets are cut, that will produce an even greater hardship for those specific council budgets. So Jim, can you talk about um, what, what we can do about, specifically about payouts um, for our council office budget, our budgeted staff that, that may or may not be um, included in your reduction? Um, thank you for the, for the question, council member. Can, can I ask you to repeat just the beginning context of that question again, just to make sure I get it, I get it right. I think I was looking at page five and I wasn't clearly listening to your, to your, your, your full question. Yeah, I think, um, so the, there was an action that was taken by the council um, many years ago, I can't remember if it was 2017 or 2018, I think it was 2017, about splitting when you're in your last year of office, our, our budgets are in the half year, start in the half year, and our terms start at the beginning of the year. And so there was a, I think, well-meaning um, attempt to ensure that the outgoing council member and the incoming council member for the same office had parity in their budgets. I think over time we have learned that that parity actually disadvantages the outgoing staff um, and the outgoing budget year for a staff for a council member because of the need to pay out accumulated um, leave mm -hmm. when yeah. council when council staff leave in that last year yes okay thank you for for um making sure i was paying attention there so yes so there is a, um, a city council policy is one of the policies under 1-8-818 that talks about the the transition year for mayor and council budgets and effectively what happens as part of the budget process is that um you know there is when we when we develop the the base budget the al the allocation for the each council offices for the first half of the year for those in transition and the second half of the year are split in half right so you have equal amounts in both the first six months and the second six months and then the amount that would get re re budgeted or carried over let's say at the end of this fiscal year for this next uh for the 24 25 budget that would be effectively split in in uh split in half also so any remaining funding that would be rebudgeted would also be split in in half. I think where I think where you're you're getting at is that split in half. Um, the council members' budget has to consider the fact that 
the vacation payouts for staff uh, need to be factored in as part of that half that that goes to the first six six months and so um, for those employees that leave city service that vacation payout is a, is a cost if those city employees remain with the next council member or they get a, a job with the ad administration that cost doesn't appear because the vacation is not paid out it just continues with the employee so um, so I know there's been conversations about um, you know if there was an exemption potentially so that council policy could be be modified in in some way by by, by the council to sort of take that vacation um, estimated amount out of the amount that gets re, re, re budgeted that gets split so that vacation payout just stays in the first six months that's something that certainly the council could direct and we could come back with the amendment to that policy okay do I need to add that to my motion to direct you please okay so I, I will move the mayor's March budget message as well as um, the direction for staff to come back with uh, a way to handle the issue as you've as you've discussed for outgoing council members and then in terms of the Jimenez Ortiz and Candelas memo and I know I'm out of time but I'm making the motion um, for uh, recommendations one and two I'd like to replace that with in alignment with the direction in the March budget message direct the city manager to number one include the proposed budget in the proposed budget an analysis of the impact of the real allocation of any measure e revenue for the provision of essential services to our unhoused residents and meet stormwater permit requirements include including the city's impact of the city's including the impact of the city's ability to issue new nofas for affordable housing and the impact if any on nofa waitlisted projects and other projects in the pipeline and two proposed propose alternative scenarios that would lessen the impact on funding for permanent affordable housing. And then I'll move item number three, which I assume will be added to the report on the parks ballot measure, which is requested in the March budget message. I would like to move number four on a go forward basis so that any current uh, parks budgets for dis district offices do not get um, do not get reallocated since they have already been budgeted for various things. And then um, I will move number five. And number six, I would like to strike based in East Santa Clara County and just make this a cost estimate because I would like the trust team to go to be able to go anywhere it is needed at the time that it is called. Um, number seven, I will also move that and I assume that any relevant cost estimates can be brought forward um, as part of the analysis to implement AB 2339, um, which I know may occur after the budget process. And um, I will move number eight as well. This, this can go through, by the way, number eight can go through an info memo or through um, the CED committee. Great. Thank you, Councilmember Davis. Appreciate that thoughtful motion and you laying that out so clearly. Second, Councilmember Foley. Um, it was really helpful. I've taken notes. I'm sure Tony has. We'll see if any uh, clarifications needed as we get into the rest of the conversation. Uh, Councilmember Foley. Thank you, and uh, thank you to Councilmember Davis for laying that out so clearly and articulately and making your arguments and statements both about the comments that came to us from the public thank you all for being here but particularly as those relate to the fast food proposal the stormwater permit and other issues that are coming before council uh, i want to thank all of the members of the public who uh, came here and spoke to us today this is just the beginning of the budget process as the mayor said earlier we have a lot of work ahead for us and this is just an authorization to staff really to the city manager and her team to come back not with numbers and make make a suggestions and recommendations on how we're going to spend the minimum dollars that we have first i want to say thank you to mayor mahan for his thoughtful and collaborative approach to the budget process this year and for including me in his budget Budget Brown Act. It's always an honor to be part of that and be part of the contributions made there. I'm also grateful for the rest of the colleague, my colleagues who participated in that budget message as well. 
after re reviewing the five-year budget forecast with our budget director, it's clear that we truly have tough times ahead. And we need to be really careful and thoughtful about how we expend our, our dollars to make sure that we preserve the services that our residents need and demand of us as a city council. As we, as we navigate challenging economic conditions, it's crucial to find opportunities to wisely allocate resources to preserve essential programs and services within our community. Prioritizing the preservation of these services in our budget planning process is vital in sustaining the quality of life for all San Jose residents. As stewards of the public trust, it is the duty of us on the council to produce a fiscally responsible budget that delivers on the critical needs of our residents. We need to continue to build upon the gains we've made in staffing up our police force, ensuring we invest in recruitment so we can quickly fill vacant positions in critically needed areas. We hear from our residents all the time about how we would they would love to see more officers in the traffic enforcement unit as an example. Additionally, as the chair of the Vision Zero Task Force, street safety is a top priority for me. This budget message calls for funding to deploy automated, automated speed enforcement cameras, as well as funding for life-saving, quick-build infrastructure improvements on our most dangerous corridors. These, pre these improvements, while some may disagree with them being placed in our on our streets, they slow down traffic, they save lives. We must also manage the impacts that homelessness has on our city services and housed residents while treating our unhoused residents with dignity and respect. Homelessness is one of the most vest vexing challenges facing our city. This budget message calls for ambitions and creative solutions to, the, to homelessness, including investment in emergency interim housing, which has proven effective in humanely getting folks off the streets and inside including completing completion of the four EIHs that the City Council approved uh, months ago that make sure that we improve, uh, complete those, those that are in the pipeline, which includes one in my district on Cherry Avenue and also helps with the stormwater protection as it's on the Guadalupe River. Lastly, having a clean city that we can all be proud to call home is not only a matter of civic pride, but also a key to attracting investments in San Jose. The mayor's budget message builds upon our existing work to reduce blight by proactively working to prevent blight before it occurs. I look forward to working with my colleagues as we go forward with the budget. I support the budget message. I support the motion that has been made, obviously, since I seconded it, and um, I just, I don't have any questions at the moment, uh, but I may, as my colleagues have things that they ask, I may have things that I wanna bring up and, and follow up with more information. So with that, I'll just close and thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Councilor Foley. Let's go to Councilor Torres. Great, thank you, and thank you all for being here today. Uh, those were pretty powerful uh, statements and I just want to let you all know that uh, I, I see you, I hear you, and I'm definitely uh, with all of our folks from SEIU and our fast food workers. So uh, thank you, uh, Mayor, for allowing myself uh, and our budget, uh, budget Brown Act to collaborate uh, on the March budget message. Uh, I know for many of my residents and local businesses, there are many concerns are housing our unsheltered residents and the amount of blight in our city. Uh, it is vital that we work to house our unsheltered residents as we look into the effectiveness of each housing model being proposed. And while blight is an eyesore in our city, we have, a, we have included prevention language when it comes to tackling tagging in our city in the budget message. For me, it's important that we have intervention for our young adults to not have their lives ruined by our criminal justice system simply because they are crying for help. Prevention and intervention are important to me because many of the teen teenagers that I, I grew up with had their lives ruined in the early and mid-90s due to harsh sting operations cracking down on graffiti 
and tagging, and I definitely don't want that to happen to our young critters again. And with that, uh, I do want to include a bit more on the buz budget message, and, and I'm hoping that uh, Councilmember Davis and, and Foley can agree uh, to the language I'm going to propose. Uh, in number one, I'm going to go verbatim, <laughs> so uh, bear with me. In the MBA requested by the Rules Committee on March 6th to provide information on different housing and, sh and shelter models, including analysis on the following elements, which be which will be key to helping the council understand the relative, relative, relative effectiveness of each strategy. One time and ongoing cost to the city for each model. Two, the estimated time frame it takes to implement each model. And three, any data available on the likelihood of users of various proposed strategies access, accessing stable housing. And if how such outcomes may rely on the availability, availability of other resources, i.e. housing voucher availability, new permanent affordable housing, et cetera, based on the outcomes of pre previous projects. And then number two, develop an MBA with an analysis of potential revenue measures that the council could explore to help addressing housing and homelessness initiatives and other critical community needs. And also, give me a second, I also want to ensure that we include San Jose Yeah as a partner, as mentioned on page 19 of the, bu of the budget message when working with our youngsters who are caught tagging. So that was, I failed to include that in the, in the, in the first go around, but would you accept my, my language? Yes, I'm happy to accept that amendment. Is that okay with my seconder? Yes, it is, thank you. Great, thank you. And, and with this language, I'm looking for staff to do some analysis so the council is equipped with necessary data and info regarding the cost of various solutions to our unhoused crisis. In addition, it's time that we acknowledge the gap in funds needed to fully address uh, our housing crisis, and I look forward to seeing some initial thinking of opportunities for our city to further generate revenue through these various mechanisms so we can give our proposed solu uh, re solutions the resources needed to be fully effective. I also want to thank Councilmember Davis for her leadership in crafting this, is, this motion, and I think her bringing in ideas from uh, my colleagues' memos, right, we're going to have the tools necessary to make these aforementioned tough decisions in the coming months. So again, thank you uh, to Councilmember Davis and Councilmember Foley as a seconder for accepting my, my friendly amendments, uh, and I'm, I yield my time. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Councilmember Torres. Councilmember Cohen? <clears throat> yeah, thank you, uh, Mayor. Um, and I want to thank everyone for being here as part of this discussion today. This is it's really important as, part of, as we kick off this process to hear about people's priorities and, and learn about their values and understand uh, what we should be thinking about as we move forward. This is the beginning of a process and not the end, and your input is really important to us. Um, I want to thank Councilmember uh, Davis for, I think, summing up very well and saying it very well uh, uh, about the trade-offs that we're facing and, and, and crafting a, a, what I think is a comprehensive motion based on the work that some of us did collectively as part of the uh, Brown Act group with, on the mayor's budget message and also a lot of work that I know others have done in, in creating the other memo and, and have been thinking as we move forward in this process. Um, I want to also just you know, kind of piggyback on something that was said about the difficult relationships that we have on the council. I think it's important um, just to understand that I think the transition we had last year was an unusual one given um, the extreme level of known people on this council all at the same time with a new mayor and two appointed members. We didn't have the normal transition process and I don't think we ever, we jumped right into a budget process right after we were done with the with the appointment process and never really had the opportunity to build the, the teamwork and, and, and relationships that I think we need for, for us to function well on the 18th floor as members of the city council. So um, I think some of those frustrations continue to rise to the surface and we're hearing them and I think uh, this gives us maybe a little bit of a boost to, to work on some of that as we move forward. So I, I look forward to doing that. Um, I do have a question for um, Jim, just to clarify for myself. We, in the, the, the mention of that line in, the, in page five about cuts to mayor and council budget, we made a, one, a cut to the mayor and council budget during this fiscal year. Mm -hmm. Was that a current year cut with a reset of the budget or are those the new baselines moving forward in our budget? Those were the new baselines, so those were on, ongoing reductions. So we did make those budget. cuts, so I think we ought to be mindful of that as we move forward, that we've, we've taken a hit for our offices, which I think was the right thing to do and I advocated for that. Um, but we ought to be a little bit careful because we are still providing essential services in our offices as we, uh, we move forward. Um, 
Now, the biggest challenge for me uh, going forward will be this trade-off between how we fund interim housing and how we continue to, to address what I think is the most crucial challenge facing our city, which is our shortage of affordable housing. It's a long-term problem that is making our city unaffordable for our kids and people to live here and for, and, and actually, as has pointed out, homelessness is, based, is caused by this housing problem and we need to continue to address it. How we balance that is really important and as you might recall, it, was, it hasn't even been a year since we went through this process and, and uh, I fought really hard in last year's budget um, to preserve as much a measure for affordable housing as possible and make sure we had money uh, for NOFA and I, I'm, I'm committed to trying to find all avenues to preserve as much uh, as we can for affordable housing. Um, having said that, you know, we, we have um, also as a council unanimously supported expanding our interim housing uh, program and that leads to some obviously cost implications and then the need to make sure that we clean up our creeks for the purpose of our stormwater infrastructure, but because it's the right thing to do for our environment as well, um, has, uh, obligates us to, to find resources for that as well. And we're gonna have to continue to do both, but, um, you know, I, I always tell the story about the timeline on affordable housing. While it's frustrating, the truth of the matter is an affordable housing project that comes forward now and gets a NOFA will open doors to residents probably by about 2032. Um, and while it's important for us not to lose progress on that, um, we also have been continually telling folks to be patient uh, with what they're seeing in their neighborhoods, along the creeks, near the schools, and in their parks. Um, and we have to find a better balance to that. Um, and, and that's what we'll be doing in the, next, in the months ahead um, as we move forward. Um, I am looking forward to, uh, as a member of one of the three voting members of the city on the uh, ABAG board voting next month to support putting on the ballot a regional housing bond, which will, uh, I think, be a really important, um, s not just supplement, but replacement for the fact for Measure A, which has now ex basically all been spent in Santa Clara County. Uh, the good news about that bond is that there is money actually specifically earmarked in it for San Jose. So San Jose will have control over a portion of the revenue raised by that bond, whether it's 10 billion or 20 billion total for the Bay Area, we will have resources there that we will have for San Jose. Um, and I look forward to um, supporting that housing bond and trying to provide dedicated resources that we can quickly begin to deploy uh, for further development of affordable housing um, in Santa Clara County and San Jose. Um, we also need to keep seeking out partnerships to help fund what we're doing. Uh, the state has stepped up. We have it in my district, uh, the Cerrone housing site. The state has provided us the dollars for the units. We will have to operate, do some more infrastructure work and operate the site. Um, we also have some philanthropic support that's coming in to help us with some of these sites. The county will hopefully be helping with some funding. Every time we get some of these funding, um, this funding assistance, that's reducing what we're gonna have to spend in this year's budget. So we're gonna continue to work hard to try to find, make sure we have that, that outside funding coming in. Uh, and as mentioned by Councilmember Torres, uh, a couple weeks ago as a rules committee, we asked staff to come back with, a, with an analysis of all the various types of interim housing solutions so that we have better information as we move forward and, and decide how to most effectively spend the dollars, both for speed and for efficiency as we move forward. So we're, I think it, it's important for everyone to understand we're working hard on these problems, but they're not easy. Um, and then the last thing I just want to mention as we move forward is just the important to keep our eye on some of the other priorities we have as a city. While these major priorities of cleanliness and homelessness and housing will always be our primary objective, um, I want to make sure we continue to preserve the progress we've made for our community, improving our park maintenance, opening our libraries on Sundays, supporting our digital equity program, planting trees, especially in areas that are, have been uh, under that have a low urban uh, canopy um, and providing other core services for our restaurants. And sometimes when we have a budget message like we're approving today, these things often fall through the cracks and seem to be, seemingly are ignored while um, underneath we're gonna continue to try to make sure we fund those important services. At least that'll be what I'm pushing for as we move forward. And then the last thing is the um, prioritization on our environmental goals. We have a, jet, a really, really, um, a, a, aggressive objectives of being carbon neutral by 2030 
and I'm committed to making sure that we continue to invest in that. The good news is that for the first time we now have uh, reserves from San Jose Clean Energy that will allow us to invest in the clean energy transition. So we're being helped right at the right time with additional funding that we can invest in some of these other initiatives on the environment. So I'm looking forward to that discussion as well as part of this uh, budget discussion. Uh, so those are the, my comments and I look forward to supporting the motion on the floor. Great, thank you. Appreciate those comments, Councilor Cohen. Uh, Councilman Ortiz. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first off, I just wanna thank all of our um, audience for coming out and having your voice heard. Um, I especially want to thank uh, our fast food workers. I wanna let you know that your voice matters. Um, and we may not be uh, addressing that issue today, um, but um, you know, I'm committed to working with you. And I just also wanna say that you know, if, if your business uh, requires paying poverty wages, then maybe you shouldn't be in business. And if your business requires you to provide minimum worker benefits, then maybe you shouldn't be in business. And if, you know, it doesn't impress me that somebody has 30 employees or 60 employees here in San Jose, if your employees have to work two jobs just to pay the rent. So I just wanna put that into perspective. Um, while I find value, thank you. While I find value in the various types of interim housing programs and services, I cannot support funding them at the expense of permanent supportive housing. While both of our memos cite the annual community opinion survey, our memo recognizes that affordable housing remains a priority for residents and provides direction to ensure there is still funding left for construction, acquisition, and preservation. And it doesn't su surprise me that residents are asking for affordable housing to be a priority. As in the past three years, affordable housing has always remained in the top three according to the annual opinion survey. This is especially important to carry with us as renters in San Jose must earn $45 an hour to afford the average monthly rent for a one bedroom apartment. And a minimum wage worker earning $17.55 an hour would have to work two and a half full-time jobs to afford living in a one-bedroom apartment here. Additionally, 51.5% of renters pay more than 30% of their income for rent, and about half, 25.1%, pay more than 50% of their income for rent. And furthermore, the reality of rent burden is racially and ethnically disproportionate as 53% of all Hispanic renters and 54% of all black renters are rent burdened or severely rent burdened. When we talk about building affordable housing, we need to look beyond the numbers and recognize that these are desperately needed units for working families. Without them, these rent burdened families will be pushed out of the city of San Jose. Uh, many of our fast food workers are, are rent burdened. As the conversation on this topic continues, I wanna make myself clear. Um, as we discuss the reallocation of, of dollars, we need to make sure that we maintain a strong pot of sustainable funding for our affordable housing here in the city of San Jose. Next, I wanna talk about trust. So another priority for San Jose residents is public safety. And as referred in the annual survey and by residents of Eastside San Jose, the county's investment in funding a trust team has demonstrated its worth as clinicians and social workers serve as alternative first responders, addressing individuals experiencing a mental health crisis or substance abuse issue and re uh, releasing pressure off our already challenged police and uh, sheriff departments. While the results of this approach have been promising, there are currently four trust teams that respond to North County, South County, and West Valley cities and a Campbell team that responds to calls uh, from San Jose. However, if there are not enough workers on shift for North and South County, the team who responds to San Jose will be deployed to those calls as well, leaving San Jose with, with no coverage. So that's why we, we mentioned East, 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 East County. It really meant all of San Jose, but I'm, I still support the, um, the, uh, the motion. But we're, we're requesting this, the city manager to evaluate the funding of additional trust team, uh, trust team members with a sole responsibility uh, of responding to our areas that are, are uh, underserviced. So park impact fees, that's an, another one of my priority and it shouldn't be a surprise 
um, that parks continue to be a top of mind for myself um, and the residents of my district, East San Jose. For too long, the funding mechanisms of this city have left east side parks behind, letting them fall into further disarray and in a way creating a call for blight and crime. And truthfully, I don't see any way out of this reality without a complete overhaul of our funding structures and an injection of capital to reduce our massive backlog of deferred maintenance. Um, to that end, I'm glad we are um, exploring a parked bonds conversation, which I was grateful to be briefed the other day by leadership. Um, and I hopefully that will come before us with greater conversation and uh, consideration. Though without restructuring of funding, we're going to find ourselves stuck bringing forward new assets with new, no ways to uh, maintain them. And that's why I'm very interested in moving forward with this item as noted in the joint memo. I have a few questions, but I understand I'm out of time so I could wait uh, for the next round. Councilmember, you have the floor, go ahead. Yeah, you, you still then, have time. Then Please. I will go, I thought the red meant I'm, I'm done. Okay, um, so the mayor's budget message included a lot of new proposals that to me needed a little bit more detail um, on their costs. I know that this is just the start of the budget process, so some of these details are still to be determined. But I hope that um, the council understands both the one-time and ongoing costs of these proposals as we receive the proposed budget. So I have a, a question for the city manager. Uh, can you share a little bit about how the information in regards to these proposals um, included in the, the budget, budget message will be presented to the council? Um, yes, thank you, Councilmember Ortiz. So when, once the council passes the March budget message in whatever form it gets passed to us, we will be going item by item and evaluating each one of these direction, each one of the individual directions and coming up with a proposal with detail for your consideration and, and overall we'll bring you back a balanced budget on May 1st. So there is a lot of room in here where it's, it is directing me to explore a concept or things like that because our budget is extraordinarily tight. There's other things that, the, that, is, that are not in here that the administration needs to bring forward for, to avoid risk on something or some other things to shore up an apartment need in order to provide other essential basic core services to the, organi to the community. So um, we will uh, likely not be able to fund everything at the full value of, mm -hmm. or the full idea of what might be in here because again, our, we're dealing with uh, a complex budget this year that's really extraordinarily tight but we will give you a full analysis for you to make your decisions. Also, um, this, this mayor's memo calls for um, us to give you some alternatives to things, the items that we may, might be presented in the proposed budget from the city manager, myself, and so we will provide you with some alternatives if uh, some of the strategies that we put forth aren't acceptable. Okay. So we'll give you a menu of some other ideas. They will not be uh, easy, and they uh, will, just to be frank, they will be painful. Um, given my experience as being a, the, in Jim's shoes, being the budget director during difficult budget times, but we will do our, our very best to provide you with the best alternatives that we can think of to, for your decision making. Is it, is it possible to have like a one, one space for all these different proposals so that council members and our staff can visit them and just see them all in one location? Yes, exactly. That's my thought process is okay. that I'll probably attach to my transmittal memorandum a menu of other ideas that can be substituted out for any proposal that we bring forward in our balancing strategy. Great, thank you. Um, then I have a couple questions in regards to the Homeward Bound program. So I've never heard of a program like this. Uh, are we gonna have like a set strategy of, you know, what, how we could do this? Like how do we, how do we know the cities that we're gonna be sending these individuals to have resources and services already set up to receive them? And like, are we gonna be liable if they end up on the street? So yeah, j just to clarify, this is something we already do in our system, and uh, there's actually a, um, a program area with Destination Home that works on family reunification. So the only, the only suggestion here is that the city manager explore making these resources available to the field outreach team so that we don't have to wait to place okay. someone in shelter to give them the ability to reconnect with family. What we find is in a portion of the exits, not the majority, we can help someone 
with first and months last last month's rent or move in with a family member who may be struggling to pay the utilities. And if we have flexible funding, we can often help facilitate, not often, we can sometimes help facilitate family reunification, which means we don't have to wait to build a brand new permanent affordable unit. Uh, we have had, I, I forget the exact stat, but just in the past year at the Guadalupe site, I believe we've now had um, certainly over five, I think almost 10 exits that have actually been the family reunification path, but it often requires a bus ticket, a plane ticket, first month's rent, help with utilities, something to help that family handle having a family member come back home. So it's a strategy we already deploy. We don't want getting into an EIH or a converted motel or whatever it might be to be the barrier to being able to access those funds. So the idea is we'd take a flexible pot of funding, probably go to a third party provider like Destination Home and look at expanding that to field outreach so we could offer that directly in the field without having to wait for somebody to get into shelter. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, then I have a question for Jim, Jim Shannon. If we approve exploring a congregate shelter and new safe sleeping sites, would preliminary cost estimates show that these sites would bring us into a further def deficit? Thank you for the question. So I think for the safe sleeping sites, um, those are going to be, you know, one of our strategies that we out, outline to be able to address the stormwater permit. So finding a, a, a place for folks to go who are along the creek. So that's going to be part of that $25 million sort of placeholder figure that we were talking about. Is safe sleeping sites are part of are part of are part of that. Um, we're working on figuring out what that number should 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 be and how you know feasible it is. And we do have direction in the March message to accelerate that. Um, to make sure we bring those online as soon as we can. Um, I think for the analysis for the congregate shelter, I think it was more of a um, analysis of a cost estimate in terms of I don't think we have direction to to go and build build those, but that does need to be as as part of our analysis. I think it's an MBA Lee is reminding me, so that that cost will be brought forward as part of a manager's budget addendum later in, in the process. Okay, thank you. And then, uh, and this is just a question, but uh, if the costs, you know, are um, in this place where you know it would put it at a, at a further deficit, could we possibly revisit some of the EIHs and instead of doing the EIH, do these larger congregate shelters that would house more people? I, I mean, I think that's a, a choice the council can certainly I'll make. So as as we you know bring forward the cost, that's certainly a, a choice. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Um, well, that's that's all my questions for now. Thank you. Great. Thank you, council member. Uh, Vice Mayor Kamei. Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to thank everyone who came to participate. Uh, gracias a todos por su participación. Uh, and I'd like to thank my colleagues for um, your thoughtful memos, the mayor's uh, budget message, and all the work that goes into this. This is just the beginning, but with a 52.1 million structural shortfall, it really requires intentional investments in our highest priorities. And I know that during this whole process, some things are going to fall off. Uh, but, <clears throat> you know, we um, need to continue to focus and, you know, take a look at uh, some of the requirements, especially as was mentioned by Councilmember Davis. Uh, the municipal stormwater permit is critical. And, uh, you know, as is addressing housing and our unhoused population. So we have to keep all of those things in mind, as well as doing the regular work of the city with our municipal services. Um, I wanted to make a suggestion in terms of looking at uh, closing the gap. Uh, and, you know, uh, Council Member Cohen did mention that we had already cut last year and made that sort of permanent along the way. Last year, we uh, gave, uh, as a council member, as council members, $35,000 each, in addition to the mayor's budget being cut 100,000. I would also take a look at proportional percentage reduction, if it's possible, as opposed to right now, the mayor's budget reduced the essential services by 33%. That means that the, the dollars available for doing stuff in the community has already been cut. So I think that balancing that is something that I would ask to be at least considered and taken a look at. Um, revenue sources are always critical, and we need, uh, necesitamos un poquito de uh, uh, silencio para que podamos oír todas las cosas. We need a little bit of silence so that we can hear everybody and hear what I'm trying to get across. Um, 
Uh, revenue sources are always critical and we need to look at the partnership possible to increasing funding opportunities. Uh, and I really look forward to the staff's information and recommendation to address what's going to happen in terms of the Measure P fundings. I think we need to continue to address uh, the challenges of the unhoused, but also remember how important production preservation and protection are. Uh, I think that it's important we have things in the pipeline, that we move them forward as quickly, quickly, quickly as possible. Um, you know, I think that in the past, many suggestions have been brought forward, even looking at locations, uh, you know, finding basic low-cost solutions. As we do that and as we continue to uh, maybe dust off what the staff has looked at before, I would really um, caution on going uh, to what is the cheapest in congregate shelters because it may sound good but may not necessarily be appropriate for uh, you know, uh, a majority of the people or, you know, a number of people. So I think that as we proceed, I would say proceed with caution. I'm really delighted that um, the uh, city manager mentioned bringing forth alternatives. I look forward to, to seeing that. I also want to um, address the, the issue of oversized vehicles um, and really have the city manager come back with um, I think it was mentioned in the mayor's uh, budget message in terms of looking at uh, what cities like Mountain View have done. The one thing that I hope to request, and I'm looking at my neighbor here, uh, this issue of uh, the van lords is a huge concern for me because it is not yet a problem, but we don't want a problem to even begin. And I know that initially we heard about uh, there are some who are taking advantage of those who are, you know, most vulnerable and are renting these RVs. Uh, and I think that before things get out of hand, I would respectfully request that uh, van lords be uh, taken a look at in terms of prohibiting you know, you don't, if, you, if it doesn't start, you know, we can, we can nip it in the bud now. And I know it's not a problem yet, but because it has come up, uh, I think that we need to be mindful to, at least as we're looking at uh, these restrictions, to uh, take a look at that. So I'm, I'm asking Vice my Mayor, colleague, just as I that. turn to the maker of the motion for your, and make sure we have a, the clarity on the friendly amendment, I do want to note there's a section in the budget on van lords. Right. It is something we're aware is, is potentially becoming an issue. We have heard of some instances. Um, so I just want to clarify, in addition to the direction in the message, what it is you're looking for, and then we'll turn to the I, maker of the motion. So in, the, in, in your message, you talk about buying out the liens. Yeah. I don't think we need to go there. I think we prohibit van lords, period, in the city of San Jose. And just, just, you know, just initially make that out, you know, put it out there so that, uh, you know, we, we, we create a situation where it is not legal to have van lords. Um, I know so it's the direction new. I, I assume would be to explore how we enforce that. Yes, basically. yes, yes, that is correct. I would like to ask the city manager's office if they, before I give you an yeah. answer, um, if, if they think that this needs to be something that's in the, needs to go through the budget process. Um, I, I think we could, and we have the direction in the March budget message to, to look at that. I think as we're going forward and looking at that proposal and see how that proposal will be structured, we can think about the enforcement mechanisms to kind of think about that as we put forward any budget proposals. So I don't think we need any specific direction based on this comment here. I think that'll just be part of our, okay. part of our uh, evaluation. And, okay. Yeah, and just, just to explain the, the logic behind it, at least we're trying to get upstream because exactly. what we understand van lords are doing is basically buying them. If we buy them and have them destroyed after they're in a junkyard, then there's no supply of them, at least locally, for someone to become a van lord. I think enforcement gets into a bunch of policy questions that are also legitimate, but I'll leave it to the maker of the motion if they need to be, it, it doesn't sound like they need to be added at this time. That might be something we could do through PISFIS or through the Rules Committee. I guess my issue here is that um, it isn't a big problem right now, but I could see it becoming a bigger problem. And so instead of waiting till it's a problem, as you're looking at whether you're gonna buy the liens or whatever, 
what is also the possibility and enforcing not having them to be good begin with you know because I mean yeah you could buy the, the the liens and and destroy them but hey they could come from somewhere else people are and they'll, they'll rent them right here so I just I just want to get it as yeah. part of the mix. Yeah, totally. Very valid. I think it's going to take a lot of exploration to figure out who we figure out who owns and, and kind of what documentation may be available. But let me turn to the maker of the motion and her thoughts on next steps here. Yeah, Lee, I'd, I'd just like to ask kind of your thoughts on, I, I heard from Jim about looking at enforcement in terms of what kind of ordinance we would, do we have those the resources for that where would that where would that fall what kind of um, how would this get added into the budget process I guess yeah I think as we continue to explore this as part of the proposed budget if this is a, a greater lift than what we anticipate obviously as Jim said we can build that into the proposed budget whether we propose it um, or we list that as something that we're not able to fund and then again I would say around enforcement of it um, we've discussed it as part of the execution team and the cabinets, you know, for the unhoused residents, but also the increasing community safety. And it could be a matter of bandwidth, but we need to look at those policy options through the ordinance first, which I think we have jump started some of that work. So I'm, I'm comfortable moving forward with Jim's okay. comments. Yeah, so I think it's kind of already in there, but um, if it makes you more comfortable, I'm happy to. to uh, make sure that it's in there. Make sure that it's in there. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm good with it's making sure that the it's in there. there All right. I'm, so, I'm glad that we're making sure that it's in there. Is that, well, I'm, I'm actually a little confused. I, I know the, the, what's in the budget addresses the issue, but it doesn't tr address the policy side of it. And, and I'm wondering if the budget action, if that's the, the vehicle for addressing the policy side, which <coughs> could be an ordinance, it could be state legislation, there's, there could, it could be something that the T&E committee takes a look at. I'm just wondering if sending it, including it in the budget right now, beyond what's already included in the budget, is what we need to do. And if, if Lee, you're saying we're doing it already, then, then I'm fine too. Yeah. So, Councilwoman Foley, one of the things that the message says is that their, their suggestion is that we're going to buy the liens. So what I'm saying is that in addition to taking a look at these alternatives, also look at uh, making it restricted so that it's not uh, in the city of San Jose. Okay. So, you know, I mean, the, the city manager said that she would bring back alternatives. I just want to make sure that this alternative makes its way to this. Doesn't just assume purchasing it. Right. Great. Right. I, I'm that for correct. that. I would accept that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for the clarification. Yeah. Thank you so much. And, you know, there's a lot of other items in the, in the, in the message that I agree on, especially in terms of improving community safety, attracting jobs and investments. You know, I do want to highlight the uh, Children and Youth Master Plan. I'm delighted that there's going to be a pilot in terms of looking at uh, the strategies essential to essential to address the needs of family and youth. I think that we need to keep it, you know, sort of front and center. Um, I also think that digital equity and empowerment has kind of taken a little bit of a backseat uh, because they're doing well, but let's not forget it. And uh, with that, I, I thank you so much. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Appreciate that. Councilman Condellas. Thank you. I, I, I want to start by thanking all members of our community who came out to speak on the budget. It's going, to clo it's going on close to five hours now, so thank you and gracias for everybody for being here. Um, I also want to thank the mayor and my colleagues uh, who helped craft the budget message, and especially to Councilmember Davis uh, for your leadership on this dais um, and <laughs> crafting a thoughtful uh, motion, uh, which I will be supporting. Um, I appreciate the effort put forth as we look to confront one of the most pressing challenges facing not just our community, but the region and state. That is the affordability and unsheltered homelessness crisis. Homelessness is not just a political talking point, it is a human tragedy that affects individuals and families in profound ways. It robs people of their dignity, their security, and their hope for a better tomorrow. And as leaders in our community, it is our moral obligation to address the crisis with urgency and empathy. A holistic approach to solving homelessness begins with recognizing that it is a multifaceted issue uh, with complex underlying root causes. As stated earlier in the latest annual survey, our residents were asked about the quality of life in the city and to identify areas of improvement 
to make San Jose a better place to live. And the top three were addressing homeless issues, providing more affordable housing, and improving public safety, nobody's surprise. While the budget message addresses the homeless issue head on, um, it does very little with regards to the creation of homeless, uh, uh, the creation of homes people can actually afford. Building more housing is undoubtedly a critical step towards alleviating homelessness. Um, as mentioned by many in the audience, 70,000 families in our community are rent burdened, and it is the primary factor driving uh, our neighbors into homelessness every single day. Look, no single entity can solve this. Uh, we, we know that, and it's gonna require a concerted and coordinated effort from all sectors of our community, um, especially given the fiscal outlook that we have in the coming years. But perhaps most importantly, we must approach this issue with compassion and empathy. We cannot continue the approach of pushing our unhoused neighbors out of sight and out of mind. We must approach homelessness not as a moral failing, but as a symptom of a systemic failure and neglect. We must resist the temptation to marginalize those experiencing homelessness and extend a handout of support. It is not a matter, matter of either or, but more so a yes and approach. Our memo wants to make sure we continue funding affordable housing projects in the pipeline while we understand the difficult decisions that lie ahead. Uh, given the deficit, I wanna urge keeping both ending homelessness and increasing the availability of affordable housing as top priority as indicated by our residents. We hope our memo allows for a discussion with full accounting of costs and the impact of our different approaches. Um, emergency interim shelter is important, but the cost of expanding these resources are unsustainable and will require significant trade-offs without identifying an alternative revenue source. I look forward to engaging in the conversations with my colleagues in the months ahead. I think there's an opportunity to improve priority uh, number three, as stated by residents with regards to public safety, uh, the conversation on the critical nature of an additional trust team to help our overworked law enforcement officials uh, who respond to calls that are outside of their scope, frankly, is something that needs our time and attention. And uh, as this project budget process rolls out, I, lo I look forward to that conversation as well. Um, another item I want to quickly touch on is uh, the condition of our parks in the city. PRNS doesn't have the, the, the lawnmowers fully, fully necessary to mow the city. In fact, I recently heard there was only three lawnmowers uh, available for our entire city. This is, um, this is a basic responsibility for our city to ensure that our parks are safe, clean, and enjoyable. You know, we, we currently have a daunting challenge, a deferred maintenance backlog of nearly half a billion dollars. Uh, this backlog represents not just neglected infrastructure, but deferred commitment to the health of our residents. Um, I think over time, neglecting maintenance uh, needs um, will lead to uh, irreversible damage um, and, and de decline in quality of life, frankly. And so I, I think funding, a sustainable funding mechanism for park maintenance um, is, is critical now uh, because we cannot continue to kick the can down the roads, uh, down the road burdening future generations with the consequences of our, of our inaction that's fiscally irresponsible. And I, I think that was the intent. Uh, behind uh, one of our recommenda recommendations um, that we can't keep ignoring the issue. And, and I, I heard somebody earlier m mention uh, one of the things in the message. Well, you know, I, I also appreciate the entrepreneur entrepreneurial intention of examining parkland uh, leases for commercial purposes. I, I've, I've heard from folks in my district about the potential equity issues this creates because not everyone can spend money to go to a park. And that's why our parks are so critical. Uh, we included questions regarding, regarding adequate maintenance to the park system and any potential polling that is forthcoming, and I look forward to staff bringing, bringing that back to us uh, with data. Um, y quiero cerrar um, con unas palabras uh, para las personas que, que hablaron hoy, especialmente esos trabajadores y trabajadoras que, uh, de la comida rápida quien juegan un papel vital en nuestra comunidad. Yo creo que hay una avenida adelante uh, para empoderar y mejorar la vida de ustedes y sus familias y nuestra comunidad. Uh, estamos comprometidos para asegurar el trato justo, seguridad y la dignidad para todos. Gracias por estar aquí esta tarde y darle el poder a su voz. Um, I, I want to thank the, the speakers who came out from the fast food industry, especially those workers who play a vital role in our city. Um, I believe there's a pathway forward to empowering yourselves, improving your lives alongside your families and ultimately our community. 
And you know, there's no one on this dais that disagrees and is not committed to fair treatment, security, and dignity for you all. Um, with that, I look forward to continuing the budget conversations uh, in the coming weeks, uh, months uh, ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Batra. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you to all the residents, fast food employees, restaurant owners, and others who came today and showed us the side of the life which some of these people have to live and the difficulties they're encountering. At the same time, I admire the California unions who brought attention to these workers and their life and got something substantial past this last year where they have managed to create um, a special council to address their safety, their wages, their health, and as a result, today, when we haven't accepted the fact that we should really make this as a part of our budget, it is not that we are not sympathetic to the plight which has been presented here or the wage theft issues, and we are not ignoring those. We are with you, but we understand that what your unions have been able to get done, it needs to be given a chance to that council to really propose the things. And if there are gaps, San Jose Council will always be there to take care of you. So I want to make that assurance that I'm very comfortable, that I want to give a chance and not duplicate the work which your unions have managed to get done. And so you should really pat yourself on the back and your unions for having taken your issue and gotten what you have gotten done. Now come to the budget. I thank my colleagues for having presented a very well thought out very balanced budget in a very challenging environment. And there is a lot in this budget. There's 25 pages of that. And there are many items covered in there. I'm just gonna pick a couple of items to comment on. I'll be supporting the motion which has been made uh, by our colleague, Council Member Davis, and seconded by Pam Foley, a council member. The homelessness or the four priorities which the mayor got last year, those priorities stayed the same for this year. But underneath a lot has changed. Whatever we learned from the last, four, last year's work, we're trying to incorporate and mayor has presented those as ideas for refinement and to make sure that we expand our evaluations, learn from other cities. You have many examples in the budget stated there that we will be, we reduce the cost or he proposed the cost of a $1.2 million apartments to $100,000 interim housing. We're finding that that was a big reduction, but even for that size with that reduction, with 4,600 unsheltered people, it is still not addressing the full need. So we had to find a way to reduce the cost and quick builds were quick builds, but we need quicker builds. So that's reflected in our budget. So the learnings from what happened last year is very much as a part of it. So I like this budget for that reason as well. The other aspect we also learn about the homelessness, it is inhumane for these people to be living there, but there are other consequences of that. To the people who are living around them, the neighborhoods where we are trying to build the interim housing, those people's life is affected as well because they don't know what's going on there, why these things are there, and there have been some thoughts about that there's criminal activities going on around that. So I like the fact that in this budget 25 page, there's a multiple time a mention of enforcement. Enforcement may not mean that we wanna go and cite criminal. The homelessness is not crime, we already stated that. 
but there can be criminal activities happening in that area or around that. We need to make sure that our city enforces all the rules and the regulations and the laws which we have available to make the life of these people who are living in inhuman conditions is safe and also the people who are around them also feel safe and they are all together a better community. So I like the fact that we are emphasizing that there's going to be enforcement. And we, the term which Mayor used, preserving the progress. When we clean up an area, we are able to provide shelter to the people who are in the encampments. We want to be able to keep that area clean and maybe a mile by mile, square by square, we will be able to clean the whole city of San Jose and one day will be homelessness free and the blight free in that area. So I like the fact that we are also adopting to the area of consideration that we will have no encampments or no returns to keep these areas free of these things. I want to comment on the, de uh, the trust teams. I've been always for the de-escalation. We talked about the police thing, the de-escalation, de whether it's a traffic stop or when it's a call to go to a domestic violence issue or anything. And I think that 911 study, which was done and then presented here, identified the opportunities for alternate law enforcement. So I'm totally supportive of the idea of having trust teams large enough, big enough, that we can take care of the volumes which are identified in the 911 analysis, which can be alternatively handled. Now, when we do that one, I think the other encouraging message in the budget is that we are not going to be trying to do everything alone. Yes, we are capable of doing a lot, but we cannot do it all alone. So the efforts which are going to be made of trying to coordinate our activities with the county, with the state, and especially in the health area, maybe from Prop 1 when the money comes become available, we'll be able to get more of mental health issues addressed from there. So the budget message is a good message. I totally support it. And all of these encouraging factors I mentioned, there are a lot more. And as a result, um, I want to say that Thank you for producing such a budget, Mayor. It's a second budget. It's way better than the first one even. And I think you had a lot of uh, priorities captured and especially the lot of technical improvements in terms of the methods we are gonna use, learning from other cities and other experiences. So congratulations on producing such a budget and thanks to all the colleagues who worked with you on the Brown Act. Great. Thank you, Council Member. Glad to hear you're seeing improvement. Appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> Council Member Dewan. Thank you, Mayor. Um, since I'm the last, I get to take up 20 minutes. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, I just want to say thank you to, to all of you who attend this meeting. And Council Member Davis said it best. We, there's a law coming down from the state, and we should let it play out. It doesn't mean that we ignore or we don't care about you. Um, I work in many fast food uh, in my lifetime and, and I know what it is um, to be prejudiced against, um, to, to expect to work um, you know, way over the amount of time and, and not taking time off and especially with the economy that we have here in the Bay Area is extremely expensive to survive on. And I just want to let you all know that we'll find a solution to make sure to work with our city staff, with nonprofit organization, to make sure that our uh, fast food worker will be educate, educated toward their rights and, and know how to protect themselves. I'm going to get back to thank you, the mayor and my colleagues uh, for putting this um, March budget message together. And, and, and I specifically th want to thank you, the mayor, stick to the, the four basic that when you started out. The four basic is, is, is technically re reducing the unhoused resident, 
keeping our communities safe, cleaning up our neighborhoods, and bringing in investment to this city, that's create jobs. Those are the, the four basic that we're, we're trying to stay on point throughout, you know, for the next term until we reduce the amount of unhoused residents. I'll tell you this, Council Member uh, Batra and I myself put together a memo where we talked about sprung up structure, prefabricated engineer structure to get our unhoused residents out of the cold, to save their lives, out of the heat, give them the dignity and respect with wraparound services. The other choice is this last year we had 201 unhoused residents die on the street. That's inhumane. And I think it's important that we have to solve the unhoused residents because if we don't, all the money that's going to go to affordable housing won't be there because we'd be spending so much money to try to resolve the unhoused residents. For the last 20 something years, we haven't resolved it. So we have to think out of the box, come with a new program, and we were all on board. I believe that we can reduce the amount of res unhoused residents and then bring back the sanctity and the laws that we have right here in the city of San Jose. The unhoused residents have affected every one of us, the residents, the visitors, the businesses, the school, the parks, every aspect of our lives. That is one of the biggest key to this city to bring in back job, to bring in back investment, making sure a residence is being, feeling safe at least. And I'm glad that we invest into our police department and our fire department by recruitment and retention in the police employees and also the fire department and to support the Med 30 program and the paramedic program as well. By having police present, the community policing, to have the air support unit in the air to, to help us catch the criminal, which create faster response, that will make our city safer. Now we have spent, I, I wanna tell you, this is the first, I, I've been in this city about 42 years. Mayor Matt Mahan is the first mayor I've seen out there, out there cleaning the creek almost every week, including myself, taking time away from his kids and his wife to support the community. And a lot of us council members are doing that as well. And we spend enormous amount of time cleaning up our city but the main cause of all the garbage in our city come from our residents who are illegally dumping. And in the mayor budget message, we do have a program that we're gonna catch those people with cameras and enforcement. And with all of your help, with all the volunteers, if each and every one of us pick up a piece of garbage every day, we reduce approximately one million pieces per day. And I think it's important that we, all of us, participate. At the least and not last, San Jose have been known as a bedroom community. And why are we are the bedroom community? Because we don't have enough business investment to create enough jobs for the citizen right here. We the only metropolitan with anomaly where resident leaves in the morning to go work everywhere else and spend the money somewhere else versus right here in the city of San Jose. And in order to get the business taxes, in order to get all the services, including building more housing, we need those investments. And I will absolutely unequivocally support the motion from Councilmember 
Davis and second by Council Member uh, Foley. And I hope that we together will continue to fight for equal rights and equity in this San o city of San Jose. And I hope that you come with an intention to make this city better, not only for yourself, but for everyone else. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Appreciate your words. All right. Tony, let's vote. Motion passes unanimously. Great, thank you, Tony. Thank you all very much. All right, we have two remaining items. We have a very short staff presentation on item 4.1. Uh, colleagues, there is, okay. I'm sorry, excuse me. We need to continue our meeting and our business this evening. I'd ask you to leave without disrupting the meeting. Thank you. All right, if I could have staff come down for item 4.1. I understand we have a short presentation. What's that? I don't know. You want to take a break? 15? All right, we'll take a five-minute recess. Thank you.